Devon Bigley from Raven Oval bringing you the game between St Kilda and Melbourne. Peter Moore on the ruck against side bottom. The ball favours side bottom, but he won't go for it. Burns went for it. The ball chapped away from the pack toward Melbourne's half forward line. Gerard Healy went on the seam. It looks like John Fidge getting the ball over and taken by uh, the other Healy boy, and his name being Greg Healy. So there's Greg Healy and Gerard Healy, 33 and number three. Melbourne going forward. The ball not taken. It's in the forward pocket. A chance for John Fidge again. He swings back now on the left foot. He balls. He's going to have the shot toward goal. He hooks it round, but it's off target. Only one behind. Yes, uh, good effort there by John Fidge as he swung onto the left foot and uh, tried to banana kick the ball in, but unfortunately for him and Melbourne, who's just off line, Fabia is doing the kicking into Morewood. Oh, gee, Lux of Fortune as the bounce favours Morewood. He goes back after it and he kicks it wide towards centre wing. Up they go. Peter Moore punches the ball away. A hand pass comes from Cronin towards the centre wing. And there's the kick coming right up towards the four line. Darrell Cunningham has been paid the mark. It was a good pass to as it came right up there towards the half forward line. Darrell Cunningham on the left foot, up towards full forward. Tony Lockett over the back, charges towards the ball, kicks it off the ground, and through it goes for a behind. So that's a good start by the Saints to get it up to their forward line. A slight breeze favouring the end, which Melbourne is kicking to. And uh, one point apiece at the moment. From the full back position, the ball will be driven in toward Peter Moore, who leads toward the half back flank area. It's his ball, no worry. No, he dropped the mark, taken by Greg uh, Gerard Healy, playing fairly well, if even this early in the game. Finds Williams, and Williams takes the mark on the centre wing position out of side. Williams of Melbourne with the ball, looking for a hand pass now toward Greg Healy again. Healy looking in toward Templeton. He goes toward that player, but he can't take the mark. Was pushing the back. And Templeton will take the free kick from the forward pocket position with the breeze will be slightly against his kick. He'll have to allow a little bit for the breeze to push from left to right. So Kelvin Templeton, with well within kicking distance, could be $100 in Peter McKenna's pocket because here, <laughs> here, I'm at, praying, Jack. <laughs> here at Moravan, uh, St Kilda have a little competition before the game. And Kevin, uh, Kelvin right. Templeton is Peter McKenna's choice, but no, he hasn't got it. It's come to turf in front of the pack now Hodges there free kick to Hodges from mine the umpire said no and Hodges forced it through for one behind yes Glenn James uh, let that one go could have been a free kick too I think Jack but still the umpire was closer than us two behinds to one in favour of Melbourne at the moment as we see John Fabia who seemed to play an eternity for St Kilda reserves and now has his chance in the seniors towards the half back line the ball is tucked away it's picked up by Williams in fact he had a touch of the fumbles grabbed by Greg Burns, Burns back handle. towards centre wing over the back of the pack here's a chance for the Saints kicking the ball up is Foister he goes for the short one it was a poor pass up towards full forward Stephen Smith well out in front of Lockett good play by Smith goes wide to Greg Healy who marks on centre wing now the two Healy boys in uh in business early in the game. Healy playing on now, getting on the left foot and driving up toward the full forward in Templeton. Burns can't take the mark. Can't recover properly. Yes, he does. Gets around very nicely. As a matter of fact, they kick straight into the opposition. Picked up and delivered downfield. And the ball off the boot of Frawley down towards the half forward zone. It's a clash between side bottom and Moore. Neither get it. We'll see a boundary throw in. Peter Moore's not too popular with the St Kilda members as they hooted him as he ran towards the boundary line, but that's normally a sign that you're a pretty good player, I would think. I would say so, yes. Peter, Peter Moore takes front position. Trevor Barker picked that up beautifully. Goes for the short one no towards Darrell Cunningham. No mark and correct decision by umpire Mitchell. Grabbed by Barker. Up towards full forward. Smith in front of Lockett. Over the back of the pack. It's taken away by Stephen Nick. Beautiful football. A long hand pass to Gerard Healy. He picks it up. Another hand pass. A 30 metre one out to Johnson. Johnson on centre wing. Sprints clear. And he kicks it long. Right up towards Robbie Flower. Up in front. Down to the ground it comes and St Kilda come away with the football from defence from Hodges. Up towards Keel. Keel over to, to, to May. To May onto the left foot up towards the forward line. The mark has been taken by Alan Jack and he's got a loose man. Is this Faschini, Jack Edwards? It is so. It's Silvio Faschini could run into the open goal but he didn't elect to do so. He's going back to take the shot at goal. He's into the breeze, though. And I must mention uh, to the people who are watching as uh, Jack Edwards could receive $100 here. There's the kick. It won't make the distance. Punched away by Smith. Back towards the forward pocket for St Kilda. Some good shepherding going on. Grabbed by Keel. St Kilda looking pretty strong at the moment. But Melbourne bring it out of defence with a long kick by uh, uh, Jarrett. Right down towards the centre wing position. Well, that's the way off. 
beautiful play to Cowie. Cowie to Foister. Foister caught to the ball. Over to Barker. Barker knocks it back to Cowie. And uh, oh, the up said in the meantime that he was helping. He didn't have the football. Yes, a free kick going to Barker. Barker looking down to half forward. A 15 metre penalty will go his way. Now Barker will be looking for Lockett. I would think. Lockett leads. He's, there's the pass. Not a good one. It's too high, really. Smith should spoil. No, Lockett got the hands to it. And Lockett takes the mark, but not forgetting the breeze is in his face a bit. That was a great mark by Lockett. I thought Smith had the perfect position to punch that ball away, Jack, but up uh, with those strong hands of Lockett and a tremendous mark. And uh, you and I are both hope it. Well, he is a fair way into a slight breeze, and uh, it would take a very good kick by Tony Lockett here. Let's see what he does with the drop punt. No rovers round the square either, but Lockett's drop punt kick travels well off the boot. It's pushed it a little bit and has gone through for one behind. So the breeze would be pushing that way, Pete. It's yeah. pushing across the ground, and Lockett, he would have had to muster a fantastic kick to score there, to score a goal, that is. Trying to kick it too far, too far of course, and well, uh, you to. tend to lose your accuracy as Stephen Smith kicks it in. At the moment, the scoreboard showing two points apiece as the ball is on that half-back line. In goes Giles. A dive on top of the ball. Peter Moore is there also. And uh, no one can get away with the football. Young Grant was there for St Kilda also. On bounce. Seven's big league now. The scores, as Peter told you, two points apiece. The ball on St Kilda's half forward flank. Not a lot of action going on. And uh, the umpire comes in to bounce again. The umpires today are Glenn James and Chris Mitchell. Well, not an Mitchell. exciting start, Jack, really, is it? Oh, it's not bad. St Kilda against the Breeze, and they're the undermanned side, so they're not doing a bad job. It's been put down to the half forward zone, but Melbourne's defence stands firm. A kick, not a good one. Fashini's there. Walks around the players in opposition and kicks high toward the forward pocket. Lockett again. Well, Tony Lockett got a chance now, but I'll have to mention again, he's kicking into the teeth of the breeze now. It's not a very strong breeze, but enough just to alter the kick a little bit. Lockett off the boundary line. It out. He'll be out about 30 metres from where he'll kick. Man on the mark might be that far out, but Lockett going for St Kilda's first goal. In fact, going for the first goal of the day. On its way, I think he may have missed it. No, he hasn't, he's got it. Lockett kicks the first goal in the game. Tony Lockett, horse and Kilda. First goal, seventh big league scoreboard showing St Kilda 1 2, 8 points, Melbourne 2 points. Yes, and a very good start, uh, admittedly. We've only been playing in this match approximately eight minutes. But a good start by the Saints. They're under man today, but uh, Melbourne are kicking definitely to the scoring end. And St Kilda are matching them at the moment. And Lockett, a great start with two good, strong marks as we see Moore against side bottom. Moore gets that one punched away by Kelly O'Donnell. Paul Moore with beautiful football. Paul Moore had got a trip. Gets in the hand pass, though, out to Tomei. They're looking good, the Saints. Up towards half forward, where a good, strong mark is taken by Giles. Giles can see Williams leading to the wing. A little bit late getting the ball there, but he goes toward Cordner. Cordner takes the mark, too, on the half forward flank. He's a long way out from goal. I don't think he'd score from there. He might kick it up long for Templeton. Kick, not such a good kick. Templeton coming out, but can't get into the ball. To pack of players down there. The umpire, I think, will be forced to bounce this. Yes, he will. And we'll see a bounce taking place only 25 metres out from Melbourne's goal. St Kilda, one, two, eight points. Melbourne, two points on Sevens Big League in the first term of the game here at Moravan. The ball put down. A chance for Williams of Melbourne. With the ball in front of him, he got away nicely. A hand pass came back towards Fidge. Fidge has it now. He hooks back towards goal. That was smothered. And it goes to turf. Picked up by Greg Healy. Greg Healy's left foot kick. Not a good one, but it's a chance for Templeton. He dropped the mark. It's only 15 metres out from Melbourne's goal. The action taking place. And... Oh, it's Gerard. Gerard. Yeah, I'll get those two confused. Well, one that wearing three and one wearing 33. Right in front of goal, as we see Templeton to do the ruck work against Cowie. The ball is knocked away by Burns. He was grabbed when he didn't have the football. In fact, they're too high as well. Now, Greg Burns is a long way away from the centre of the ground. He's gone for a dangerous kick, but it comes off as he finds Cowie at centre-half back. Cowie plays on quickly, and the ball's come down there, taken by Cronin. Cronin walks around the opposition, carries the ball a fair way downfield, and puts it out wide for Tomei. Tomei can't get to it. Could have been in the back there for the umpire will play on, and the pace of... Uh, Johnson going around that outer wing. Look at him go after three or four bounces. He puts the ball up high to Templeton. Cut the ball, thumped away. Can't take the mark. Flower shoots toward goal. 
Not even the skills of Flower could kick that one, only one behind. It was a uh, poor play by Cronin, running straight down the centre of the ground. Uh, Jack yeah. and he kicked a 20 metre short pass out wide to put his teammate under pressure instead of going for Lockett, which was very poor play. Scoreboard showing uh, one goal to St Kilda, three behinds Melbourne. Fabio receives a 15 metre penalty. No, no, it's Barker's free kick up, right up the ground, is it, Jack? Yes, he was against Peter Moore. Look now at this. Chance for side bottom to get St Kilda moving now. Going fairly short again, as Peter McKenna said before, but this time it comes off. It's been taken at the half forward zone by Cunningham. Darryl Cunningham is it Jeff? It's Jeff. He's gone out wide. Lockett's a target. Lockett takes it. Exciting young player, this. He's a great full forward. I reckon he's going to be. Could be anything as a full forward, Jack, and he it's leads still, to the pockets a bit. Oh, he just certainly say, does. Still but I think, I think that's mainly because he's a young player, and I think there's not a, there's always more room on the flanks for a full forward than there is up the centre, and you're always tempted. But Lockett's a, normally a pretty good kick. Gee, it'd be a great start if he could kick this one, Jack. 40 metres out. Breeze will push it away from right to left. The kick did that more than the breeze, and it's off target, only one behind. So Lockett now has had three chances. He's kicked one goal, two. Uh, I suppose kickable goals, the three of them, Pete. Yes, I firmly believe uh, the first one was pretty difficult. That one could easily have been kicked. He was within scoring range. One goal, three to three points. But a great start by the Saints into the breeze. They're doing, doing quite a good well. job as we see Smith kick towards in the, the half-back line. Was that in the back? No set up by Glenn James. A hand pass comes across to Thorne. Thorne onto the left hand. Gives a hand pass across to Yates. Yates, the running back pocket player, up towards oh, centre wing. And that was a very good mark by Paul Morwood. Morwood playing on quickly, looking in towards the centre half forward area. There is a chance here for big Peter Moore, but he can't take it. Side bottom does the rover. He got hit too high. Looked for a free kick, then decided to play on. His hand pass comes to Hodges. Hodges gets himself in the spot of bother, goes downfield. A blind kick. And it's been taken forward pocket there a good chance here for Jenkins to kick a goal he's only 25 meters out from goal little fellow on screen now is Alan Jenkins 25 no more than 30 out dead in front of goal and I don't think the breeze will have much effect on this kick if he doesn't kick the goal it's just going to be it's just going to be a bad kick and it's a bad kick but it got there and it's a goal not a good kick but St Kilda's uh, second goal Things are looking different here. St Kilda 2-3, that's 15 points. Melbourne 3 points on 7's big league. Well, I agree with you, Jack. That was a very ordinary kick. <laughs> it was a wobbly old drop punt. It slewed off the side of the boot, but still a low trajectory one has still went through, and that's the main thing. I'm just wondering whether Melbourne just a little bit overconfident, Jack, after a big win, a couple of big wins the last couple of weeks. And oh, it's early days. I know it's early, but I, I think at the moment, St Kilda in the Endeavour are beating them, as we see Burns up high towards half forward. Giles, a courageous effort. Couldn't take the mark, though. In they go, and the young St Kilda the side is dives on top of the ball and they get the plaudits of their supporters there. I think that's young, uh, is that young Grant, I think David Grant, no, Foister it was, who dived on top of that ball and kept the ball towards centre half forward. Here's the bounce of the ball. Peter Moore against side bottom. Moore gets it down to the ground. A hand pass comes across to Gerard Healy. He sprints through the centre of the ground and kicks towards half forward. The ball touched away by Fabian. Good umpiring to let it go. Grab, grabbed by Greg Healy. He hooks it back towards the forward pocket. Templeton goes after it, but it goes over the line out of bounds on the full. The penalty down there to be taken by Danny Frawley. Frawley in the back pocket will be forced to go to the outer side of the ground. He'll be going toward the scoreboard position. It's a high kick, one that doesn't favour anybody really. Or a chance for Burns to take the mark behind the pack with a free kick being awarded Melbourne's way to be taken by Williams. Williams in a position which would take a great kick. He'll be looking for Templeton. He kicks high toward that player. Up they fly, the ball thumped from the pack again. There's a chance now for Melbourne if it can be picked up and snapped toward goal. Healy gets it going. And he uh, can't get a goal, though. He puts it off target. That was Greg Healy, only one behind resulting. So Melbourne, four attempts to goal. have only bought them four behinds. And uh, St Kilda, two, three, 15 points on Sevens Big League. St Kilda not playing oh. badly, though, but that's not a good kick toward Fashini. He tapped it over. That was good thinking, too. He follows the ball through very well. Picks it up, got help. Got dragged down or take the free kick. That's good playing. It was, Jack. Great play by Silvio Fasini as he cleverly kept possession of that ball, put his body in front, 
received the free kick. He goes for the short pass. This could be dangerous, all this short passing, though. Play on, said the umpire. Alan Sidebottom doing well early in the match. Picks it up. Well, oh, kick the ball as the fans scream. Up towards Morwood. Beautifully done, Paul Morwood. Bounces off an opponent. Oh, pop him in the head. Play on, said the umpire. Half forward flag. In they go. They're going in hard. Here's a chance now for the Saints. But Melbourne have received the free kick out of this. And it will go to Stephen Nick, I would think, on half-back flank. Still a bit unlucky there because young David Grant had broken away from the pack to have a shot toward goal for St Kilda, but the free kick had been awarded. Moore into the back of the opposition. The umpire said a mark would be paid to Peter Moore. Moore on the wing position, members' side. Going toward the uh, south road end of the ground. It kicks up long toward Templeton. No mark taken. Picked up well. Looks like Fabia coming through. Was he got the hand pass away? And the ball forced now. Plenty of time for the players to get a kick going as Hodges looks downfield in the back. Oh, the umpire's not awarding those. Well taken. And the ball driven up there. It's a long kick by Foyster. Not so long. Into the half forward zone. No free kick again. The umpire's letting things go on. Healy gets pushed in the back on this occasion, but still play on as the call. It's been oh. tapped out and Cowie picks up. He hand passes to Keel. Keel off the side of the boot. A poor kick comes over towards Cunningham, but he can't get it. No, it wasn't. <laughs> These guys, pals, confuse me, these blondes. It Darryl was Darryl Cunningham. I thought it was Jeff. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Jack. St Kilda really having a fair to come go. That's a free kick. Oh, boy. And by James let that one go, but still he was close. I would have paid it. The side bottom. A kick on the left foot. Up towards centre wing with the markers taken by Williams. But St Kilda going in very, very hard after that ball in this first quarter. St Kilda leading 15 points to Melbourne's four. So it's a lead. Oh, a good try, 11 points. Good roving there by Keel. Gets the ball back towards Fashini. And a good pick backing up by Morwood too. Morwood goes in short. Well placed. Kick finds Poister. Poister should look for Lockett. He kicks it up long. Too long really for Lockett. And the mark taken by Stephen Smith. It's a bit long for Lockett that one. Smith looking out wide. Looks to the outer wing. The lead by Williams doing well in the first term. Williams on the half-back flank for Melbourne, looking up toward the centre of the ground, looking for Healy. It gets too long for Healy. He's looking for who? No one yet. Cordner was the target, but he couldn't find him. The pack forms up. It's forced, forced out to Fabia, taken by Keel. Keel gets a left foot kick working down. Giles did the actual shepherding in one sense, and the mark has been taken down there by Yates. Yates of Melbourne on the half-back flank position. Up toward the half, or the centre wing position he travels. Comes to turf, a chance for Johnson. Johnson got a quick hand pass over the top. Another chance for Melbourne's Healy to come forward. This is Gerard Healy up towards Templeton. Frawley from behind. It's taken off the pack, smothered beautifully off the foot of Thorne. In they go. Beautiful football. The hand pass comes out. Here's a chance for Melbourne. This time through Bailey on the left foot. He fires and he's put it through a lovely goal to Bailey playing in the centre of the ground. St Kilda, 2-3-15. Melbourne, 1-4. Ten points on Seven's big lead. Well, a tremendous start, Jack, to this game as far as Endeavour. St Kilda, well, they've Elphinstone's out, Crow's out, two of their, their centre-half back and their centre-half forward. They're really taking it up to Melbourne. That was a lovely goal by Brett Bailey, though, on the left foot. And Melbourne, well, I still think they're kicking to the end favoured by the slight breeze, and I think they would need a two or three goal break at quarter time. That I think they would, but Peter, I just looking, I don't think I've seen Jarrett out there for Melbourne yet. The ball tapped down, it's been tapped again, comes back to Keel. His hand pass goes straight toward Peter Moore. Peter Moore taps it over the top again, taken by Williams, given to Johnson. Johnson hooks it back toward Fidge. Fidge can't take the mark, but Gerard, it's your Greg Healy's here. He can't pick up cleanly though, gets raced out again by Keel. Well done. Keel gets a hand pass, but straight to the opposition. It's a part of the ball decision, no play on the call. It comes forced out now by Hodges taken by Fabier out toward Burns on the wing position out of side. He's going to play on now with a hand pass. Should have kicked the ball. Now it gets thumped down towards uh, side bottom. Side bottom goes with a funny looking left foot kick out toward <laughs> Grant. It wasn't a very good kick at all. It goes out toward the boundary line and I think that's where it'll finish. I think Alan Sidebottom would be uh, uh, advised to run onto his right foot in future after that attempt on the left foot as we see Peter Moore against Alan Sidebottom. Moore and a long hit out towards centre wing, but oh, that's it. Kilda side is desperate. Paul Moore was in there. The ball is knocked further afield. Side bottom over to Barker. Barker kicks towards full forward. Oh, Locker dive. Couldn't take the mark. Zantuck on the left foot. Grabbed by Fashini, though. This is danger. Saints punched away by Fashini. Picks it up. Still got the ball. 
hooks it back towards the forward pocket and kicks it too far and out of bounds on the full. But, oh, I don't know whether he should have tried that, Jack. No, he tried to do too much there. Lockett was out of position because he didn't know where Fashini was going to finish. And the ball did finish out of bounds. Moore got a little nudge into the back of side bottom there. But it was a been awarded the mark again. So Peter Moore playing quite well. Going from the half-back line now with a kick that wobbled off the boot up towards Cordner. Cordner in front. Cowie taps it down well. Could have been a free kick St Kilda's way. The umpire said a trip will be paid. So St Kilda, as Peter said, going in after the ball and picking up the reward with Barker's three kicks. Barker's setting a good example too. Oh, he's doing well, Trevor Barker. Looks like he's found some more lemon rinse. <laughs> a few of them have. Here's a chance for the Saints. Darrell Cunningham overruns the football. In goes Zantuck, picks it up. Hand pass across to Rodney Wright, who's taking his place in the 18. Uh, Alan Jarrett is not out in the ground. Robbie Flower, that's the first time we've seen him. He's been closely attended to. Burns a beautiful hand pass across to Tomei. Tomei on the right foot. Free kick up the field, I think. Oh, no, it's coming back. A free kick to Melbourne. Half-back flank. And it will go to Alan Johnson. I don't know what that was for. I didn't see it. Well, I was writing down the change in the teams then, Peter, so I can't help you because Wright is on the Ooh. on the field. I didn't, I hadn't seen Jarrett, and I wondered why. And uh, now Wright bobbed up. So, well, I wondered. I would maybe think that Jarrett might be out. I think because uh, I noticed Boland wasn't in the seconds, so maybe he's in the senior side. There's Cowie from behind punching the ball away. In they go after it. Gerard Healy, cleverly done, knocks it out wide. Fashini playing well on the right foot, hooks it back. Marked though by Rodney Wright on centre wing. Right on the wing position, he's nearly in the centre of the ground really. Templeton should be the target. Kick not long, but Templeton coming out for it. No, he can't get there first. Comes to Keel, doing quite well back there. Strong play here. The umpires were holding the ball. He had to be quick turn. You've got to be time. retarded. Uh, Burns kicked the football, He actually got Jack. the kick in, yes, I know that. Well, Melbourne going forward. Here's a chance for them now as the ball comes to turf. Into Healy. Greg Healy goes. Goal with the kick pretty close. The umpire walks to the left-hand side and indicates only one behind. So Melbourne off target through Healy on that occasion. St Kilda on two goals, three, 15 points. Melbourne will have one goal, five, 11 points to their credit now. We've been playing 22 minutes on seventh big league. The first quarter at Moorabbin Oval. Hodges kicks off from fullback. An ordinary kick, but a lovely mark by Paul Tomei. He breaks away and kicks it high. He's looking for Jeff Cunningham against it. Cleverly done, Jeff Cunningham, but there's no one there to lend a hand. Coming away with the football is Gerard Healy. He kicks it wide towards uh, Cordner. Cordner against Cowie. That's a good battle. Morwood over the back. In goes Paul Morwood after the ball. Cordner into his back. Play on, said the umpire. Fabio punches the ball away. A chance for Tomei. Tomei against Ellen Johnson towards the boundary line. It goes on centre wing over the line and out of bounds. The time clock, almost 23 minutes gone in this first quarter. 2-3 St Kilda. Melbourne wasting the breeze. 1-5. Yes, yeah, St Kilda doing well. Peter Moore getting the ball moving now in toward the forward pocket and Templeton. Thought he may have been paid that mark. The umpire said no. But a free kick will go to John Fitch. Fitch in the forward pocket. The shot will be about 40 metres, not quite 40 metres. And John Fitch will have the breeze to push the ball in from left to right hand side. So he'll have to push it out just a bit in front of goal to let the ball come back in with the breeze. John Fitch would kick this goal. Uh. The umpire said John Fitch has kicked that goal. So Melbourne now go to the lead, their first of the game. St Kilda 2 3 15, Melbourne 2 5 17 on Sevens Big League. That wasn't a bad goal, Peter. No, nice goal. I think he was, uh, I, I don't think, I think it was a bit of a fluke actually, the kick. It wasn't kicked as, as he wanted it to kick a normal drop punt. I think he missed kicked it and the ball floated back the correct way, which often happens when you try a drop punt. But uh, a good game so far early in this first quarter. So Kilda taking it up to Melbourne. But uh, Melbourne, uh, with the slight breeze, should be doing a bit more, I would think. It comes towards right. Right on the right foot. Kicks it towards centre wing. Paul Morwood from behind. Couldn't take the mark. Here come the Demons through Thorn. Cowie waits behind the back. Beautifully done, Daryl Cowie. Onto the left foot he goes. Up towards half forward. Out they come. And a nice mark taken there by Gerard Healy. He's a, he's a mover. Healy gives it out to Williams. Gets the ball moving long, up toward Templeton. Punched away by Favre. Here's Fidge again, just got a hand pass away in the nick of time. Chance for Keel, as I said before, doing quite well. The hand pass comes back to Burns, who left it behind. Burns out of trouble, this time with a hand pass. Cowie taps it on. Cowie has to try and tap it out again. Melbourne a chance to score now. 
It's been picked up by Cordner. Tapped back by Cordner. Players losing their footing out there. Keel in trouble. Got it out to Cronin. Cronin in trouble. Gets it back out to Keel. Keel picks it up now. Just got a little kick away in the nick of time. A chance for uh, Healy. Healy caught. His hand passed on court. And now Cronin set hold of the ball. Oh, beautiful tackling by Barker. Tremendous tackling. And uh, he's setting a fine example for his teammates. Over to Hodges. Hodges hooks it towards uh, centre wing. Up they go. Oh, good luck. Behind the play, and this will be 15 metres. A beautiful mark by Daryl Cunningham there as he was thrown into it. Actually, in the end, onto the left foot he goes. He's looking up towards half foot. Oh, gee, no mark though up there to Giles. In they go after it. Foister on the bottom of the pack tries to get away with the football, still trying to kick the ball. And the umpire, umpire Mitchell, were coming and bouncing on half forward flank. I thought Foister got legged as he came out of that pack, but the umpire didn't see it. He might have been blocked off by the pack that was there, but. We've been playing 25 and a half minutes now, the first term at Moravan. St Kilda trailing by two points to Melbourne. Side bottom looking for a free kick but can't get one. Now the umpire said there is a free kick in there to side bottom. The time clock getting toward the 26 minute mark. Side bottom can see the lead by Lockett. Not a bad looking kick. Lockett's there. A good pass, good lead. Everything was right. Well done, Peter. Oh, well done. Beautiful football by Lockett. Lovely pass by side bottom as Lockett let out magnificent. And that's where he must lead to, Jack, down the centre of the yes, ground. A low trajectory drop punt. Terrific play, Alan side bottom. And let's hope for St Kilda's sake that Lockett can put his second on the board. Well, St Kilda's third if he gets it. 45 metres out. Lockett's kick. Looks good. A goal. Tony Lockett kicks his second goal. St Kilda's third goal. So on seven. Big league scoreboard. We see St Kilda 3-3, 21, Melbourne 2-5, 17. Yes, well, that uh, does my heart good to see that. I'd love to see a full forward lead up the ground and someone uh, load, look for the full forward and they know he can kick straight. They know he's a good player and great play by side bottom. And, uh, well, as you said, they've hit the lead St Kilda 3-3 to 2-5 and they thoroughly deserve it at the moment. They only lost it once, really, haven't they, in the first quarter? So the bounce going down now, 27 minutes have gone. You're watching the first term on Seven's big league. Uh, Grant couldn't do much with it. Got it out to Burns. Burns kick goes straight to Stephen Ick. Stephen Ick of Melbourne at the half-back position. Looking straight down the ground. The only way to go, two. Kicks toward Cordner in front. Moore's in front. They're all there. Taken away here. The hand pass comes out to Kelly O'Donnell. Taken by Fidge. Fidge left foot kick. Not a good one. Keel comes it away from Greg Healy. Then follows through nicely. He's playing well in that back pocket area. Keel gets the ball away and Fabia to get the kick. Bit long, got a hand pass away, but Johnson's there for Melbourne. He balks, he's going to take the shot. No, he can't get clear. Looks for corner, taken by Cowie. Cowie gives it back again. And St Kilda, as Peter said before, looking quite good. The kick dropping a bit short. Jerry, Jerry Cunningham couldn't take it. Taken by side bottom, he's in trouble. A long hand pass comes out a little bit too wide for Cassini. He taps it forward. O'Donnell does it. Tackling and good play here by Zander. Peter Thorne, but there's a free kick. I think it could be further down the field. It might have been against Jeff Cunningham, I think. But Zantuck's having plenty to say to him. Play on there. No, it's going to come back. And it will be a free kick Melbourne's way. Oh, the St Kilda crowd are in fine voice today as they're roaring at the umpires. And this is another 15 metres. This time again, against Jeff Cunningham again. Right down the world's centre wing. Thorne goes to short pass to Cordner. Cordner nearly drops it, but he marks it centre-half forward. Well, that was very undisciplined football by the two Cunningham brothers, anyhow, for mine. Cordner puts the ball up high. Chance for the fellow at the back. Tableton! Yes! Tableton! His mark should be a goal. He's only 15 metres out from goal where he took that mark. And a good mark at that. So well, St Kilda could lose their lead to Melbourne just prior to the quarter. Well, I think young Crawley has done a tremendous job in this quarter on Templeton. I've been watching him closely. Jack, he's been bustling him, playing him tight. On that occasion, he got too far in front of Templeton, 10 metres, and gave Templeton the drop to come over the top of him. Well, that should be a goal to Templeton here. Now we'll take the lead on Seven's big league scoreboard. St Kilda 3-3, 21. Melbourne 3-5, 23 in the time clock. 29 minutes into the first term. Yes, a terrific first term of football at the moment. I, I think uh, Melbourne came into this game hot favourites at the moment. St Kilda taking it right up to them, as I said. And uh, it's those, they've got a very small side in today, St Kilda. We're looking, Jack and I were looking at them as they warmed up. And uh, the only 
really tall players I can see are probably Cowie playing at centre half back and side bottom. The rest, Jack, would be around the six foot mark and smaller. Oh, except for the full forward in Lockett. Oh, well, Lockett uh, yeah. would be about six foot one and a half, I suppose. Yeah. But besides those three, there's not much else in the way of height. Right centre bounce. Umpire James. Two points between the teams. Melbourne leading with the breeze. Siren sounds, end of the first quarter. So at quarter time, I'll repeat the score. Melbourne, 3-5-23. St Kilda, 3-3-21 on seventh big league. From Moravan on seventh big league, we bring you the game between St Kilda and Melbourne. The quarter time score has been St Kilda, 3-3-21. Melbourne, 3-5-23. Only two points between them. Could have been a free kick to Jeff Cunningham. The umpire calls play on Corden is there. But knocks the ball away from Cowie and runs after it now in the half forward zone. Having trouble picking up. Pashini a little bit slow to get there. This is uh, Greg Healy picking up now on the half forward flank. Straightening up, looking for Templeton, I would think. The kick delivered in that direction. He Did he or did he not take the mark? He did. No, no, it's pretty hard to tell from where we are. But it looked like the ball may have hit the turf first. But the umpire has awarded the, the mark to Kelvin Templeton. Templeton has kicked one goal for Melbourne out of their quarter time score of three goals, five. So Templeton having a shot from what we normally call point blank range, only about 40 metres out. The breeze in his face slightly, and Templeton, Brownlow medalist, kicking toward goal now, puts it up high, hasn't made the distance, it drifts toward the forward pocket area, and will go out of bounds now off the hands of the players. The umpire said not before a free kick was awarded to Kilda's way. Kelvin Templeton, uh, that is uh, disgraceful that he couldn't make the distance from that far out. That's how far his kicking has gone off, uh, Jack, as far as distance. That's odd just kicking it to side bottom. Side bottom marks. He's doing all right too, uh, Alan Side bottom, as he marks on half back flank. Another uh, 15 metre penalty. He doesn't decide to take it. He kicks towards centre half forward. Oh, they look a bit small. Giles, as I said, they look far too small there. And uh, Giles took an easy mark at centre half back over to Peter Moore. Moore gets it further afield to Rodney Wright, right on the right foot, right up towards the centre wing area. Up they go, and the ball is punched over the line and out of bounds. Boundary throw in, taking place on the wing position, members' side of the ground. Melbourne leading by two points over St Kilda after a very good first term of football. Moore can't take it clean. He won it well on the rebound. Now he's trying to break away. The tackle wasn't sustained. It comes to turf. Williams tackled by Barker, and the umpire said a trip will be oh. made for Williams. Didn't quite see it. I did. Williams free kick. Up high. Cowie and Cordner. Cordner takes the mark at centre half four. Well, Cordner a long way out from goal. He's right up on the line of the square, as you see now. The full forward Templeton in the, in the uh, goal square. I think he'll kick long and hope that Templeton can make position to the ball. Templeton get a lot of attention from Frawley down there. The kick by Cordner, it is long. A drifted favours Templeton too, and he's taken the mark. Oh, that was a great mark. That was a tremendous mark by Templeton as he, uh, the ball floated in the air and Templeton read that to perfection and plucked it off the hands of Frawley for a very, very good mark. And this time he's only 15 metres out directly in front. Yeah, Templeton too much experience at the stage for Frawley. Puts it on its way, gets his second goal now, so Melbourne take a bigger lead over St Kilda. Melbourne four goals, five, 29 points, and St Kilda 3-3, three, three, 21. Yes, and watching the seconds, it uh, certainly looked as though the end which St Kilda is now kicking to was the scoring end. But the, you can score both ends, but certainly the breeze be a better two or three goal breeze that end. But St Kilda mu must concentrate on going in as hard and tackling as ferociously as they did in the first 30 minutes of this game. Second quarter, only three and a half minutes old as the ball's put down in the centre, tapped out by Moore, kicked off the ground here and another chance for St Kilda now. They can go forward, the left foot kick comes down toward the half forward zone from Barker, taken by it, given to Greg Healy, given over to Zantuck. Zantuck on the wing position, just gets the kick in the nick of time and puts it up toward the half forward zone. Thumped away is a chance for Keel, who did well in the first turn. Got it out to Cronin. Cronin goes up the ground, straight up the ground, but Ick's in the way and takes a very good mark. Yeah. Stephen Ick, good mark, half back. Well, they're certainly missing Crow up there. They have to play Jeff Cunningham at centre half forward. Good tackle by Cunningham the more. That'll be a free kick up the field against Jeff Cunningham, set up by James. And oh, Jeff Cunningham not happy with that decision as we see Gerard Healy. Onto the left foot, now onto the right as he kicks it long. 
up towards Templeton. He takes front position. Punched away. Good play, Frawley. Over the back of the back is Bailey. Bailey on the right foot up high. Here's a chance for Melbourne. Up they go. No mark for Thorne. In goes Pashini. Picks it up in the back pocket and kicks it wide. He's looking out there for Barker against Flower. Flower's been a very quiet player. Punched away, though, by Giles to Flower. Picked it up by the great Melbourne player. Over there to O'Donnell. O'Donnell will go for the dummy hand pass. Now he gives it across to Healy. Healy to Cordner. Cordner runs to centre half forward. He fires at the goals. And it is a goal. Beautiful football by Melbourne. Well, the way the umpire ducked there, I thought the ball must have hit the post. But the uh, umpire now indicating the ball all clear for a goal. Melbourne 5-5-35. St Kilda 3-3. 21 on sevens, big league. Well, that was beautiful team football starting from the wing and that's just the luck of the bounce i think st kilda a bit stiff there as they ran at that ball the ball bounced back and they've got melbourne's team play going oh, that was a good play by giles to get the ball out oh, Pete, so it, but it was, was a bad bad bounce though you were dead right for st kilda You're right at the bounce uh, at the middle tapped down by his side bottom he goes in after it again having trouble getting rid of it go hand pass straight to his opponent in more kick comes up toward the half forward zone morewood at half back for st kilda Sees a lead out toward the member's side of the ground. To May, he gives the ball to. He gets a hand pass onto, Fa onto Favia. Favia getting the ball working down toward the half-forward zone. Not enough height there, as Peter McKenna said before. Boss and Kilda. And now we see the ball run over the boundary line to throw in. Boundary throw in on St Kilda's half-forward flank on the member's side of the ground. About 45, 50 metres out from their goal. St Kilda trailing by 14 points. Moore does the ruck work. The hurry kick with the boot of right. Goes in toward the centre of the ground. Can be taken here by Williams, a very effective player. Given to Zantuck. He kicks it out long toward the half-forward zone on the outer side. Flower does a roving. Picks up the crumb beautifully. He'll look for Templeton. The kick delivered that way. Not quite right. It goes in toward the forward pocket. Cowie giving chase. Can't pick it up clearly. From his boot, it goes out of bounds. We'll see a boundary throwing. Yeah, it's bad luck to Cowie. He didn't get the bounce of the ball. But you saw the magic of Flower. He had a very, very quiet first quarter here. But... Just the skills of Flower then as he got that down looking for Templeton. There's Templeton plucking out of the ruck. Now, was that holding the ball? No, said the umpire. Play on now as Frawley from full back runs away. Danny Frawley hooks it back towards the centre of the ground. Moore slipped over and was still good enough to get up and take the mark. Don't know why Frawley tried. I don't think he did try to get it there. Oh, I think he kick. miskicked it. Chance for Moore to put Melbourne deep into attack and that he does. He kicks it high. Templeton in the front berth. Frawley at the back. Thumped away by the by Frawley. Chance for Healy. Healy swings around. This is uh, Greg Healy. Gets it out. Gordon shoots toward goal and puts it through. Gordon gets another one from Melbourne. So the St Kilda fans hoop that. And Melbourne move on to 6 5, 41, 20 points in front of St Kilda on 3 3, 21 on 7's big league. Well, the game has changed very drastically in this, this uh, eight minutes of play in the second quarter. A tremendous first quarter by the Saints where they really took it up to Melbourne. But now Melbourne's starting to get their team play going. And Cordner uh, uh, doing well at centre-half. Ford has kicked two. Templeton's kicked two. And Bailey and Fidge have kicked one. But their forward line looking very, very dangerous. Was that a free kick? That was to Peter Moore as against Allen side bottom. Melbourne have added three goals in this second term. St Kilda not scored. Kicked by Moore up toward the half forward zone and it's all Melbourne at this stage. Bailey can't get it out yet. Being tackled to get it out toward Flower. Flower now got a hand pass in. It's been taken by O'Donnell. He hooks the ball up high. A chance for Templeton. But tipping in was Fitch. Couldn't hold the mark. It's near the boundary line and it may be run through for a behind or did it hit the behind post? I think it may have hit the behind post or was out of bounds just prior. So a boundary throw in taking place in Melbourne's forward pocket. Cowie. Oh, he went for the big punch and nearly missed the ball. It's grabbed by Williams. Williams gets it towards the forward pocket. The flower taken away by Fabio. And that was almost a touchdown. In fact, the umpire said it was too high. And John Fabio will take this free kick right in that last line of defence. He kicks it across oh, the face of goal. Dangerous, but it comes off as Gary Hodges marks it. He runs down the half-back line. He should keep going here because Templeton's chasing as he kicks further afield. A free kick down the field, said the umpire. As Calvin Templeton and Hodges have a few words. Jeff Cunningham, centre of the ground. Jeff Cunningham, a big job today, playing at centre-half forward on Nick. Up towards half-forward, a lovely mark is taken up there by Grant. 
David Grant onto the left foot. Goes to short pass. Oh, look at him take it. Jenkins. In he goes after the football. It's that centre half forward there for St Kilda. And up by James elects to bounce the ball. St Kilda going very, very short in that passage of play. Peter didn't try and use the ball with any length at all. And now we see it 25 metres out from their goal. It's in front of goal, but it's uh, 25 metres out and a big pack around it. St Kilda trailing by 20 points. A chance for side bottom. He gave away the free kick. And in the back of Peter Moore. And Peter Moore takes the free kick. Big lead is from the wing position. Bit of pace used by Williams and a good mark taken. Well placed kick by Moore. Playing well this fellow, Williams. Looking up toward Cordner on the nearly on the wing position. He's on half back, Williams. Kicking high. Players go after it now. It comes to turf. Could have been holding the ball. One player set a free kick to Cunningham. He certainly played for that and was awarded with the free kick. So Jeff Cunningham plays on now, pops oh. on a little pass over the top. That's very poor football. Very poor football. You should go back, Jeff Cunningham, and just kick that ball as far as you can. They've got a champion full forward. They should use him and get it down to him the quickest way possible, straight down the middle. Gerard Healy kicks it, looking for Temple, and out he comes. Punched away, over the back of Fidge. Here's a chance for Melbourne. John Fidge onto the left foot he goes, and I think he's missed it. In fact, he has, as he puts it through for a behind. He looks a bit casual at times, doesn't he, young Fitz? A bit casual in his approach, Pete. Yes, I think uh, maybe he's... Probably he's not, Jack. I think he looks no, that way because that I think way. he's a, a fairly slow player. Well, and, I, can, uh, I remember a lot of players who uh, did appear to be very lackadaisical in their approach to the football, but they, they weren't in true sense. St Kilda 3-3-21, Melbourne 6-6-42, so that means that Melbourne have doubled St Kilda's score. And uh, Melbourne in attack on their half-forward line. Bailey in there, got a nudge in the back. Now it comes out to Healy. Greg Healy gets a hand pass into Thorne. Thorne going gold, well-placed kick. It's a goal. Oh, it hit the post, hit the post. It looked pretty good off the boot. Yes, he uh, kicked it low and did everything right, uh, Peter Thorne, but just off line and hitting the post. So bad luck to Melbourne. It's a good effort, good play by Gerard Healy. Danny Crawley's got a big job ahead of him today on Templeton. Big difference in experience as he kicks towards Cordner, who's a greatly improved player. It's grabbed by Trevor Barker onto the left foot. Hooks it back towards Burns, and Burns marks on centre wing. Over to Fabio, who's trying very, very hard. He runs towards centre wing, still going. Onto the left foot he goes. He's looking up there for Jeff Cunningham. Oh, that's a free kick. No, set you up by now it is. And I think he should have got the first one. Yes, he'll be looking for Lockett. Oh, he's been told to play on his way. He's played on two. He hooks the ball up high. Lockett's in front in the goal square. Lockett up high. Can't take it on the second grab. Dumped down towards Bashini. A chance now. The little shot at goal gets knocked off by Smith. Only one behind. The shot was taken by Jenkins and pushed through for one behind by Smith. St Kilda, 22 points. Melbourne, 43 points. Seven's big league. You're watching 12 and a half minutes into the second term from Moravin. Smith puts the ball out toward the scoreboard side of the ground, the outer side. Kelly O'Donnell after it from Melbourne. With the ball in front of him, he gives it to Peter Moore now, who has a paddock in which to run. Moore drives fairly long, but it goes over the head of Cowie, and it could have been a mark, which wasn't played. Suck it off the ground now, back toward the centre of Moorwood. Moorwood can open up the game here. He should have hand passed the man who wanted to go past There's and kill. Kick out wide. He's looking for Grant, who flies, and that's a terrific mark by the young half-forward. As he marks on half-forward, back, he's going to look for Lockett. He kicks it high, Lockett's made the lead, he's got it two opponents, up goes Lockett, can't take the mark. One hand he had to go up with there, the hand pass comes out wide. Here's a chance for Melbourne as the ball's brought out of defence towards, uh, that was by Rodney Wright, towards uh, Odgers. Odgers and Tomei, Tomei fires at the goal. Showing now on seventh big league, Melbourne leading 43 points, St Kilda 28. It was a bad passage to play of that. Uh, to May, there's a few players in unfamiliar roles today, Peter and St Kilda's team. Well, isn't that's it? why I admire the effort they're putting up. As well. They've made a switch at centre half forward. Uh, Cowie's gone to centre half forward. Cunningham's gone to centre half back now. That's an uh, interesting move, Jack. Yes, well, Cunningham has, hasn't played a very disciplined game today, the way I saw it. Anyhow, play continuing in that position. A chance for Fashini. Oh. He's not going that well either. He breaks away from the pack. Takes 
Bowser Bounce and get the ball moving quickly. St Kilda want to get themselves in a position and hurriedly kick the ball. But up toward the forward pocket area now, the umpire calls play on. Looks like Big Lockett in there doing the heavy work. And the umpire now said a bounce will take place 40 metres out from their goal. Melbourne was starting to get away, Jack. St Kilda all of a sudden starting to get back into the game a little bit, playing a lot better as the knock comes out wide. Peter Moore overran the ball. They dive on top of the football. Paul Moorwood's there for St Kilda, and the bounce will take place at centre half forward. Now, look at the height. There's Jeff Cunningham, you can't see it on the screen, but Jeff Cunningham at centre half back's got to pick up corner, who'd be about six foot four, I would think, as we see Keel is playing. Oh. Well. Handball straight to Kelly O'Donnell over to Greg Healy. Greg Healy on the left foot. Cunningham against Cordner. It comes wide to Flower. He was grabbed when he didn't have the football. And Robert Flower will take this kick on half court. Black Cronin's done a fair job on him so far. Yes, Flower's starting to look a bit dangerous now. Kicking the ball up long. Templeton out in front. In the back would be the decision for mine. Yes. Pushed right in the middle of the back by uh, his opponent in Frawley. Inexperienced, Jack. Oh, once, he, once Templeton gets to the front, Peter, he's hard to beat because he's a strong player. And once you are in front, well, you then get the advantage of the player behind you giving you a shove in the back and picking up the free kick as what happened here. So we have Templeton going for his third goal. Well within kicking distance, about 40 metres. The umpire said another goal to Kelvin Templeton. So the Melbourne scoreboard being changed now to show they've kicked 7-7, seven, seven, 49 points, and St Kilda 4-4, 28 on Sevens Big League. And that's the goal that uh, St Kilda certainly didn't want because they've been doing all the attacking in the past five minutes, but uh, they've been fiddling around a little bit too much. They must get it down to Lockett and let him play one out down there with Stephen Smith. They're the running moment. himself into a position where they've got to kick around corners, Pete. Yeah, There's no deliberate right. disposal of the ball. Side bottom and Moore. Moore gets that one out. Flower charges in after it. Jeff Cunningham. Oh, good play, Cunningham. Left foot. He always gives everything, Jeff. Cunningham, Cowie at centre half foot. They're trying to get some height towards centre half foot. Grabbed by Zantak onto the left foot, kicks it towards half foot. Corner from behind. Two tall for Cunningham and flies and takes a good strong mark. I don't think Tebbett will lead. I think he'll stay in the goal square and hope that Corner can kick that far. No, he's not leading. He is. Oh, it's a bad kick by Corner. It's floating with Tebbett out in front. Oh, nearly had it. Chance for Healy. Couldn't get it. Burns receives the hand pass and gives away another one to Hodges. Hodges hand pass it effective. Fitch comes after it for Melbourne. Got tripped or got hit too high. And he will take the free kick. So John Fitch going short now into the forward pocket. It looks like Corn the target. He can't take the mark. It'll be taken away by Burns. Burns bringing the ball up the half-back flank area now. The leads by Daryl Cunningham is too high for that player. Ah, oh, good, good mark to side bottom. One hand. On the wing position. Gives it out again. Taken by Tomei. He kicks up fairly long into the forward area. The half forward zone, Nick, hand pass. No, he's about to let a hand pass go. Finds Johnson with a foot pass. Johnson comes down the wing position on the members' side. A well placed kick finds his teammate. And Melbourne can go forward now through Williams. A 15 metre penalty favours Williams, which brings him down to the half forward zone. He's taking time to get balance and he'll look for Templeton. Oh, the kick of Paul one. He took it right across to the half forward zone. Flower couldn't take the mark. He keeps the ball in front momentarily. And well taken away by Crone. Centre half forward, they've got no height there, and that's a mark in yeah. fact for Sunni at centre half forward. Well, old Lockett's got to do battle now with Peter Moore and Stephen Smith, one well, against two. He should stay it. there. He shouldn't lead from that position because Mashidi is going to have the shot. That's what I meant. See, and Moore was all by himself. He should never let out. I agree with you because if the ball there was no one when it did go over the back grid, no one there but Moore. So that not good play by Tony Lockett. He was trying to find some room, hoping yeah. to get a goal. His anxiety, now giving away a 15-metre penalty. So Peter Moore, 
Getting the short pass working now to Zanta. Oh, he's oh. missing it. It came off his knee too, but the umpire didn't see that. I thought it did. So a boundary throw in taking place in the forward pocket for St Kilda. St Kilda on 28 points, Melbourne 49 points. No free kick, Peels there for St Kilda, picked up by Giles. The kick coming very close to the boundary line and it's landed over the boundary line on the fourth. Actually, I think Peter Moore has conned the umpires a couple of times today with those free kicks and that time up by James was on to it. And that may be so, but it's a pretty smart man if you put something over umpire James. Well, I reckon it's been done today a couple of times. Lockett a beautiful lead. Well done by Sidebottom. He's looking for Lockett and he's played a fair game, Sidebottom. Now, this would take a very, very good kick. He's trying to sneak around. <laughs> oh, Lockett's saying well, as, as I said before, outside the boundary. As I said before, it takes a smart man to put something over on by Well, he does, it hasn't worked there. As we see Lockett, oh, this would be a terrific goal if he got this one. Well, the breeze could help him, Pete. It's well, going to push a little bit. He's kicked two. Oh, that's a, not a bad-looking kick. Just a line and two from behind. So Tony Lockett's kicked two goals, three. St Kilda, they move on to four goals, five. 29 to Melbourne, 7-7, seven, seven, 49. Smith from full-back. Oh. Chance now for St Kilda. They couldn't take that, though. Looks like Giles going through, close to the boundary line, but keeps the ball in play and swings it back towards Healy, the player who was reported earlier. Taken by Keel. Keel tries to keep it in play, but Rodney Wright's there for Melbourne, getting the ball back toward the half-back flank, and the hand pass comes over towards Kelly O'Donnell from Healy. O'Donnell with an open space in front of him. Takes one bounce and heads for Templeton. The well-placed kick, but it's Thorne who might be the target. Now it's Templeton's turn to tap it back to Thorne. That was good play by Templeton. Thorne has the shot toward goal, but there's a chance here for Morwood. Oh, good mark taken by Gordner. He's an improved player. Yes, he is an improved player. And from this position, you can see the angle, you can see the length of the kick. I don't know whether, whether that was a good move. Cunningham never played centre back in his life. No, well, you haven't got enough big fellas, Pete. What do you do? Gordner, point blank range. No more than 15 metres from where he'll kick. It's a goal to Melbourne through corner. So St Kilda 8-7, that will be 55 points. And St Kilda 4-5-29 on seven's big lead. Well, I suppose Tony Jewell had to do something. He tried to get height onto the forward line. Can now the move has been made, I think, in the opposite. How he's gone to centre-half back. At the moment, they haven't got a centre-half forward St Kilda. Obviously, Jeff Cunningham has been moved there. He but I, I didn't like that move in the first place because uh, I think Cowie... Well, Cowie was doing a fair job and Cunningham always gives everything wherever he plays. Up towards half-forward, there's Flower. And the free kick, is it? Yes, set up by James to Robbie Flower. Centre-half forward, he'll look for Templeton, no doubt. Templeton's made the lead. Oh, but he's got a loose man instead to give it to him. Kelly O'Donnell, who marks about 35 to 40 metres out from goal on a very slight angle. Melbourne getting on top of St Kilda at this stage, which is 22 and a half minutes into the second term. Melbourne leading, and they're on 55 points, and Kilda 29. And O'Donnell trying to put another six points on the board for Melbourne. Kick very high, but way off target. The umpire said out of bounds on the full, as a matter of fact, and uh, a very poor kick by O'Donnell. So Cowie, no, Fabio will take, no, Cowie will take the free kick. He'll be forced to go around the flank, I would think. It's a high kick and a long one. Oh, good mark to Peter Moore. Side bottom was under that ball. Too Moore, took, Moore took the easy mark. There's the kick. Cowie and Templeton punched away. It's grabbed by Paul Moore. In they go after it. Fabio's there. He's battling his heart out. Gets it out to Burns, who seems to be everywhere but the centre today, as he goes out wide to Cronin. Cronin further afield to Barker. Barker kicks it high. Oh, look at this again. Giles had his name written all over that Tommy Sharon football as he marks on centre wing. Well, I thought he may have gone into the centre on to Cordner, but he's elected to go around the flank. Healy in front. Can't take the mark. He follows it through. Might have got leg, but now we see Keel being forced over the boundary line and the boundary throwing being forced on the half-forward zone for Melbourne. It's a position about 70 metres out from their goal, so it'll take a good bit of work to get a goal from here. Cowie will oppose Cordner. Cowie got the tap down to the side of the pack. In underneath, that was Barker. Healy and another player clash in there. The umpire set a free kick to Healy. So this is Greg Healy. He'll be looking for Templeton, who now leads. 
The lead off fraud into his back. About the second or third one, Ford is given away. And Tevin will take this free kick. As I said, inexperienced, he's playing from behind far too much, and you cannot do that against a player with Templeton's class and ability, and he's jumped into his back about three times, I think, today, Jack. That's right, Peter. Umpire James can't do anything but pay the free oh, kick no, because the free it's there. definitely there, and it's just uh, inexperienced. Templeton going for his fourth goal. He may have missed it. Yes, he has. Well, that was bad news. Not a hard goal to kick from a... Uh, oh, he's not full he's forward. Nowhere near the... He was a beautiful kick a couple of years ago, and his kicking's gone right up. Look at this pack of players, Jack. It's at half-back. Yes, look it's a Kilda trick we saw in the very first game of the season. They all congregate at the half-back position, and then just as about the full-back is about to come in to kick, they break away in all directions. They go to all points of the compass. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Barker up high, the mark will be paid to Cronin. Cronin taking that mark, well judged mark too, and getting the ball moving well. Well placed kick finds Burns. Burns has a chance to get it moving quickly. Kick straight towards Zantuck. X there too. It comes away with a hand pass now. And the ball being delivered up there by Bailey toward the half forward zone. No mark to the man in front. Comes thumped down to Burns. Burns goes short again. St Kilda playing a very short game of football. And side bottom takes the mark. No one going past, so he's forced to kick. On the hook again, he hooks it back toward Lockett. Coming across the front of the back was Cunningham. He can't take it. He gets left behind. Machine, he snaps up high. It'll be one for the Rovers, I would think. A hard ball to mark. It's on the turf. Another chance now. It's been picked up. Foister in trouble. He's caught. And the umpire said, hold on the ball. Well, that was fair enough. Foister turned the wrong way on that occasion. Peter Thorne going to take the free kick. No, he's not. He's going to give it back to his teammate Rodney Wright. Nobody on the mark. No, you're right, as he runs up towards... Well, it's a 15-metre penalty, as a matter of fact, as we see Wright up towards centre-half back, kicks it high, out towards the wing. Up they go, and that's a mark, is it, to Peter Moore? No, said the umpire, play on, but Moore, too good as he breaks away. Beautifully punched away by Fabia. Gee, he's trying hard, Fabia. Backed up beautifully, picks it up, runs away from the half-back line. He's got the loose man. If he wants to give it out, he does. And it looks like Gary Odds is a long way out from uh, the play. Selected, I think, in the back pocket, Odds. Play on, said the umpires. He runs around Yates. Picks it up and kicks it towards half-forward. Too big, though, Melbourne at the moment is playing five on top of the ball. Yes, well, he knew he held the mark, and he went diving on top of the ball to try and recover it. He was pushed in the back by Peter Giles, I think, was the offending player. Now, we'll see the, a chance for Grant to take a shot at goal. Hasn't been successful yet. Hasn't had any shots, I suppose. David Grant. St Kilda need a goal. They need it quickly, too. Oh, it's a poor kick. It drops down. Lockett won't take the mark. A chance for the Rovers there. There is one there, but can he get it out? Hand pass comes out. Was it Foister? Had the shot towards goal. And hit the post. Right on the top of the post. Did. So St Kilda need that goal, but only got a behind for their effort. Melbourne, 8 8 56, and St Kilda, 4 6 30 on Sevens Big League. From the full back position, Williams dropped an easy mark. Certainly did. Oh, that's a free kick. Paul Moore it was grabbed by David Williams when he didn't have the football. And this is definitely within scoring distance. And a 45 degree angle. We've got a great camera shot of this one as we see Paul Moore at number four on his back. And when he did play on the half forward line, was normally a very good kick for goal. Let's see what he can do with this one for his first. Oh, he ran out there, Jack. It had to go there the way he ran. He didn't even run at the goal. Still in play, said the umpire. As Stephen Ick breaks away and kicks to Zantuck. Zantuck's got a paddock to run in as he casually strolls onto the left foot. Kicks it wide. Burns is there. Punched away by Bailey. Cordner in front. Bundled out of the way. In goes Morwood. Scrambly passage of play, picked up by Moore though, and he takes it away from centre wing. So he killed a force into the short game, really a bad mistake there. There were two players going for that. One was Barker and one was Tomei, but Barker has emerged with the ball, looking for Lockett. Lockett's strength doesn't win out on this occasion. The ball comes to turf. Peter Moore does the roving. Tried to knock it through for score, but couldn't do so. But defensive work here by Melbourne just keeps the ball in play, and now we'll see a boundary throw in. I thought the ball for a moment was going to go out on the full, but that did not eventuate, so we'll see a boundary throw in. Melbourne leading St Kilda by 26 points as we approach the 29 minute mark of the second term on Sevens Big League. Half forward flank, and the umpire said that 
It's a free kick for Melbourne because that inside bottom didn't make an attempt to get the ball out. So up by Mitchell, as we see Stephen Ick, halfback flank is the recipient of the free kick as he kicks it towards centre wing. Cordner in front against Cowley, and I don't think Cowley should have been moved from that position. And at the 29 and a half minute mark of the second quarter, the siren has sounded with Melbourne eight goals, eight 56 to St Kilda, four six thirty. On Sevens Big League, the game at Moravan between St Kilda and Melbourne as we go into the third quarter, the second half commencing now. Melbourne lead by 26 points over St Kilda. Side bottom, got a hand pass straight into the arms of the waiting teammate there, but it's been picked up by Healy and driven up towards Flower, and a mark should have been played. The umpire calls, play on. Cronin goes in, but Flower too elusive, picks up nicely, left foots it around the corner. He looks for Tevelin's, going to bounce badly for that player. Coming out there to try and get the ball away is the full back for St Kilda and Frawley. Now it's forced out of the pack. A chance for Cunningham. Jeff Cunningham coming down toward the half forward zone. Teammate can't make it. It's been picked up by Grant and shot further down. And St Kilda now going into attack. The left foot kick comes off the boot of Foister. Down toward Lockett and Lockett nearly held it. He has a shot toward goal and smothered. Lockett can't get it. He looks for a hand pass back. He doesn't find that either. The hand pass comes out towards side bottom. He's in trouble. His hand pass comes back and Melbourne through Zantuck can take the ball away. The hand pass comes over the top to Williams. Williams breaks the tackle, gets round on the right foot, delivers the ball up well, and the mark taken by O'Donnell. Yeah, lovely pass there by David Williams to Kelly O'Donnell. The hand pass to Williams who backed up beautifully over to John Fidge. He seems to do it in slow motion. John Fidge as he kicks it high. He's looking up there to Templeton. Crawley from behind, the bounce of the ball will favour Cordner with great pace. He picks it up, he hooks it back at the goals, and that's a beautiful goal by David Cordner for his fourth. Melbourne now get another goal lead over St Kilda. They led, as I told you, by 26 points at the half time break. St Kilda on 4 6, 30 points, but Melbourne 9 goals, 8, 62 points on Sevens Big League. There's a great piece of football there by Cordner Peter. That's his fourth goal. Well, as we said earlier, uh, terrific effort at centre half forward. Uh, Cowie is playing there at the moment. Jeff Cunningham had a brief spell there. But Cordner is a greatly improved player, has really come of age in the past few weeks. That goal coming up in two minutes of the third term after St Kilda looked like getting a goal earlier. Melbourne came back to get that goal through Cordner. Tapped down by Moore, taken by Greg Healy, given over now. And Tossel gets a hand pass to Gerard Healy. Gerard Healy straightens up, shoots toward goal. It could be another one. Yes, good piece of teamwork by Melbourne, right from the centre. The ball got out and uh, finished up with Gerard Healy, who puts it through for his first goal. So Melbourne taking a firm grip on the game very early in the third term. Melbourne, 10 goals, 8-68, have a 38-point lead over St Kilda on 4-6-30. Lovely football by Melbourne. Beautiful team football from the centre of the ground and beautifully executed kick by uh, Gerard Healy. But we come to expect that of him because he is a great kick for goal. And that's exactly what St Kilda didn't want at the start of this third quarter. Two quick goals by the Demons and it will take a great effort by the young St Kilda side to get back into this match. By the way, Gerard Healy was reported in the second term for striking Cronin. Well, that's how we read it from up here. Tapped down by side bottom. Healy tried to get it to Healy, but it doesn't come out. And they get a hand pass out. There's another chance here. Looks like O'Donnell, you know, he can't get it out yet. Now it's been hurried out of the pack up toward the half-forward zone. Been shot up by Healy. Chance for Thorne. Hand pass comes over. Tapped out of Gerard Healy. The left foot shot will be from the boundary. No, he straightens up, shoots for the right foot. That's another great goal kicked by Gerard Healy. So two goals in the space of... Oh, two minutes, and Healy has certainly put Melbourne on the road to victory. Melbourne, 11 goals, 8, 74 points. St Kilda, 4 goals, 6, 30 points on Sevens Big League. And they've taken control, Peter. Well, that was a sign of class, too, by Gerard Healy, as he was going to fire it on the left foot. He just ducked back onto the right and casually popped it through. A lovely goal by Gerard Healy, and a tremendous start. They really fired up Melbourne, as we see Giles stride back onto the ground after being off for about approximately two minutes of this quarter. I don't know what he was off for, but uh, well, three or four minutes he was off. In fact, there's Peter Moore getting the ball down to the ground, grabbed there by Ick. Ick has the ball smothered. It's grabbed by Paul Morwood, centre of the ground, gets the kick in, out wide towards half forward. The high flyers are there. That's a lovely mark over the back. And this is one of the young St Kilda newcomers in David Grant. Grant will be looking for Lockett. Lockett leads. The kick by Grant might not quite carry. Yes, it does. Lockett got there. 
had to barge his way through a pack of players, but he got there to take the mark. Now, at the kicking distance, he is about 45 metres out, where he will kick will be about 50 metres. The breeze will be in his face slightly. Lockett has kicked two goals out of St Kilda, total of four goals, six. So Tony Lockett leading straight up the ground on that occasion. Studying concentration, it'll take a good kick. Smith on the mark, trying to put him off as he's yelling out to him as Lockett comes in. Off the boot, it looks good. No, no one behind. Just off line, bad luck to Tony Lockett. He's kicked, is that 2-3 or 2-4? Two, 2-4 two, four. Four. Two, four in fact, and uh, unfortunately for him, they just cannot get the ball down to him quickly enough or uh, often enough. And uh, in a top side, I think he would be a certain 100 oh. goal kicker as there's a beautiful kick by Stephen Smith to the centre of the ground. That could be a mark, no. Didn't grab it on the second bite. Alan Johnson on the left foot, down towards half foot. Cowie dropped the mark. Cordner cleverly out to Greg Healy. Healy clips the ball in front of him, gets in the hand pass to Fidge. Fidge lines up, gives the hand pass to O'Donnell. O'Donnell fires and he's hooked that he could have given it across. But he's now going to receive a free kick. He's, the ball will be brought back here because he was down after he kicked it. And this kick will be taken by O'Donnell about. 25 metres out directly in front, so this should be another goal to Melbourne, Jack. Well, should be, shouldn't miss. He's had one attempt now. It was a hook kick he put in to try and get the goal. The player was coming in and made him kick very hurriedly. But this time, the man on the mark was stationary and Kelly O'Donnell. Put it up high. By oh, gee, he's gone close to missing, but the umpire said he's got it. <laughs> he ran right across and run another goal to Melbourne. So Melbourne in the third term, taking control. We've only been playing just over six minutes now, and Melbourne have moved their score to 12 goals, 8, 80 points, St Kilda 4, 7, 31. Well, Melbourne have kicked goals. four goals straight in this term, Peter in only six and a half minutes well, of football. Well, that's a great effort by Melbourne, four goals in six and a half minutes, and it's been good team football, they back up there. Uh, a pretty quick side, Melbourne, they're not over tall, but Moore's setting a good example at the centre bounce, not so much in, as far as marking today, but he gets the ball round the ground, and uh, side bottoms battling hard too as we see them going to contest against each other here. Not a decisive hit out. And his third again. go at it. <laughs> well, oh. would be back and then he gets his head ripped off there. Side bottom coming in to lend a hand. You've got to be careful doing that. You could often have the ball taken off you for that. Now Barker, oh gee, he's got a crowded forward line. Lock it against three Melbourne players. Peter Moore goes up and takes the mark in front of the pack. Couldn't see much point in Lockett leading out from that position, Pete. And now the hand pass comes across to Giles, who drives up toward the wing. Corden is there and takes the mark on the wing position on the outer she, side. Now well. Corden should move the ball quickly before the forward line becomes too congested. Drives it into the half-forward zone. It's going to be a chance for Templeton, but can't take it. Frawley got the ball to turf. Keel got ridden into the ground. The umpire calls play on. Going in after it is Jeff Cunningham. Leaves it behind. A chance for Thorne. He gets caught, got leg really. The umpire called play on. Picked up and kicked now by Tomei. Down toward the wing position. And uh, there is a chance for side bottom to get it moving with a hand pass to Hodges. Gary Hodges from centre wing. A look down there for Lockett. No, the ball dropped short. And this is young Lane, I think, has come on the ground. Greg Lane. Now Lockett's one out. He should get it down to him quickly. He's going to, he's take going to elect shot. to go back and have a shot, I think. Lockett made the lead. Now he has to duck back and into the breeze. This could be a doubt about the distance. Let's see what he does. Keeps it lowered. No way known he'd make the distance from there. He should have got it down quickly to lock it down. This is a free kick for deliberate. Deliberately out of bounds, I would think, is going to be paid against Stephen Smith. Or was it Zan Tucker who was the player who knocked it out? But it doesn't matter anyway because Lockett's taking this one. We nearly give him 15 metres then yes, too. maybe it could have been too. That would have taken him right to the... Uh, of the goal. So Lockett is going to actually kick this one from almost outside the boundary line, Jack. Well, he had to bend it quite a bit. There he is, nearly in the crowd, Tony Lockett. I doubt if we had to see much daylight between the posts. Let's see if he goes for the banana kick. I don't think he is. I think he's going for the drop punt. It'd be a beautiful kick from there as he stabs at the ball across the face of goal, and it's a mark. And it's been taken by side bottom. Plays on, cleverly done. No, the umpire won't permit it because he was in front of his mark. that decision because he's quite right going to go back over his mark yeah, side bottom took the mark but then he was a step in front of his mark and then played on so well, the when, he, when, will... when he if he took the mark how could he be a step in front well, of he taken the mark and move forward did he move forward he moved or not forward. yes the umpire's quite right 
Well, the decision's right if he was in front of the yes, mark, but the question is, was he in that's front of the mark? Very that's very good umpire. Very good umpire. That's uh, Chris Mitchell, yes, the umpire Chris young umpire. Now, here he is having another go. Side bottom, kicks it, and I think he might have put it through anyway he has. Well, thank God he did, because... It, St Kilda needed that. Melbourne, 12 8, 8 East and Kilda, 5 7, 37 on Sevens Big League. Well, that was an interesting one. I, I, I agree with you, Jack, that uh, the umpire was right, providing that he had not played on. Providing the fact that he'd uh, moved forward. Uh, well, when he the took mark. the mark, he, he moved forward in taking the mark. You were actually... watching that closely, oh, yes, were you, I, Jack? Yeah, I was. <laughs> And then he pushed the fellow away and played on. But anyway, I'll just get back to anyway, the centre. It was an interesting one. Side bottom got his goal, and as I said, St Kilda needed. Side bottom got the tap down too. Strong work by Burns. Gets the ball moving to the half forward zone. Going to be a bad bounce for Ormond Sundry. Another charge for Barker. Lockett's out of position, so Barker has to go toward goal. He hand passes over to Tomei. The left foot shot is on its way, but I think he's off target. Only one behind. Oh, gee, that would have been a handy one. It would have lifted the Saints if Tomei could have kicked that one. They need a few more, Pete, because 80 well, playing 39. They do, and, uh, Melbourne well on top at the moment. Stephen Smith from full-back going the big torp down the ground, side bottom. Oh, he's playing a good game, side bottom. I'm very impressed with him today. He was up and down before he took that. He was. Up. He got that one on the way down as he goes wide. Zantuck in front, lock it. Can't take the mark. Stephen Smith ridden into the ground, and he'll receive the free kick. The umpire, in fact, in the end, playing it for holding the man. Yes, he said he wasn't in possession of the ball when tackled. Stephen Smith going short. Zantuck's made position, can play on. He does so hurriedly, gets the ball moving off the left boot. Drives up to Cordner, who got a nudge out by Cowie. Another chance for Favia, but the umpire sent a free kick to Cordner. And Melbourne getting the advantage of playing in front now. They're picking up the free kicks. The lead should be by Templeton, but he's staying now in the goal square, letting Cordner kick long. Temeral getting the drop on Frawley. Up they go. No mark taken. That comes to turf. Melbourne's chance. The umpire calls play on. And it's forced through for touch for one point. <laughs> oh, Drew Burns. And once again, Burns is down in the back pocket. So claiming he touched it. He covers some territory, but it's a point to Melbourne. Melbourne will just wait for the scoreboard attendant. 12 9. St Kilda 5 8 as we see Fabia about to kick it into play out wide. He's got Fashini to take an easy mark if he wants to, and he does that. Flower, I don't think, is 100% fit because he's playing in the forward pocket. Fashini breaks away. He runs up towards centre wing. He kicks it wide. Ick is there. Oh, he flies, Stephen Ick, and takes a beautiful mark and gives it to Rodney Wright. He plays on quickly. Oh, the wing position's very open over there. Another chance for Melbourne now is picked up by Thorne, who goes up towards the full forward zone. Well played, Jeff Cunningham. Got tackled by Fidge, got rid of the ball quickly, though. Hand pass comes out from Cowie, taken by Amore. Amore on the half-back flank. Goes into the wing position. The kick, not a good one. Favours Yates. Yates now getting a hand pass around to Wick. Ick now moving it on. And Williams playing well for Melbourne, getting a hand pass to O'Donnell. O'Donnell from toward half forward, kicking high. There's a chance for the high flyers now. Frawley in front. Could have got the free kick, got the mark. It's been tapped out. Melbourne's chance. The shot at goal comes off the boot of Bailey. And it's just missed it. <laughs> See, uh, young Bailey, a good effort as he snapped at the goals. And uh, just off line. So uh, another point to Melbourne. They are dominating the game. They are well far too good at the moment for St Kilda, 12-10 to 5-8 but the Saints are trying very, very hard they're certainly not giving in, oh gee it was a mile over the line there when he took that kick, the full back towards the boundary line it goes in they go hard after the football Fabia gets it out Keel Johnson for Melbourne gets it back to Williams Williams onto the left foot, hooks it back towards centre half forward, two Melbourne players look at each other and leave it to each other no one takes the mark, in goes Peter Moore he gets bundled out of the way, Bailey also oh beautiful football that was by side bottom and a very impressive display, the Barker, Barker, Barker in the centre of the ground, out to play on, looking for the lead by Lockett, Lockett out in front of Smith Smith thumps the ground, right taps it back towards Smith and Melbourne can get away now from their half back flank area they drive up to the wing position. Oh, here's a chance now. It's, it's like little Yates. Oh, picked up, well trapped now. And it's been driven down by Hodges. Little chance now, is it? Bill Grant, is it? No, Lane getting the ball moving down to the half forward zone where the mark has been taken down in that position by the player. I got confused with Grant. Grant can take a shot at goal, but he's out of fair way because the breeze is in his face. 
It's about 45 metres out, and the man on the mark, Zantuck, has gone marked his spot. I think, he's a, I think he's a little, little bit close at this time, though. He should make the distance, check. Well, it's just about there. The umpire said it's drifted away. So that breeze is pushing that ball away. Only one behind resulting for St Kilda. Melbourne, 12 10 82. St Kilda score being changed now to show that they have five goals, 9 39. Stephen Smith. They are side bottom and more. That's been a fantastic duel. It's grabbed there at the bottom of the pack there by Forster. Up towards full four. Lock it out of position this time. And the mark is taken there by Stephen Smith. And that's Lock it left or right, Peter. Yes, I, kick was bad. yes I, I think you're right. I know that was uh, doing Lock it a disservice there as uh, we see Smith. Oh, he's been kicking beautifully from full back. This time out wide to Giles. They've got the uh, running Giles down towards full forward. Templeton's there. Ducks back, punched away by Frawley. John Fidge, dangerous, tries to punch the ball towards a teammate. Here's a chance now for Bailey. Bailey snaps at the goals. It's off line and out of bounds on the full. And the free kick down there will be taken by Phil Cronin. Cronin hard against the point post from where he'll take this kick. St Kilda trailing Melbourne. Melbourne 82 points and St Kilda 39 points on Sevens Big League. Burns used the body well, but I don't think he can keep the ball in play. We'll see another boundary throw in taking place. Uh, on Melbourne's forward line, but about 45 metres away from goal. Cowie and Cordner will do the ruck work. Cordner got a big punch away from the pack, too, which favours Burns. Tamilton came out. He got unloaded. Little Peel, who's doing well down there, gave it out to Hodges. Hodges straightens up and lets fly up toward Amore. Amore in front, can't take the mark. Punched away by Peter Moore. The ball put out toward the boundary line. Burns getting after it, got it well too. Just inside the boundary line and goes short up towards side bottom. Templeton's still down behind the play. He got collected very, very hard in that exchange as the umpire, uh, Peter Moore, I should say, appealing for a free kick. And he's going to get it too for holding the ball. And Peter Moore is on centre wing. And Templeton in the hands. Oh, he doesn't look too good behind the play. He is down and crouched down and looks a very sick boy at the moment. Could have a little bit of concussion, I might think, as we see the ball hand passed across to favour. They're still trying very, very hard, St Kilda, as they go towards centre wing, Paul Morewood marks. He's looking for someone to give it to at all. They're going the little short passes. Poister's there, takes the mark, plays on. A lovely hand pass to Tomei. Tomei runs into the open goal, stabs at the goals, and the goal off by the St Second goal to Paul Tomei, and that might lift the young Saints as they move on to six goals, nine, or is that seven goals, nine, Jack? It's six, nine. They're very quick here at St Kilda when they get a goal. Six, <laughs> nine to 12, 10. Yeah, it's a good piece of work there by Foister, I thought. Peter, to get that ball out to Tomei. It was, it was a good nice, play. It was a nice mark. Nice piece of work. But St Kilda need a lot more goals yet because 12-10 uh, playing 6-9. They're trailing. Melbourne doing well. And Templeton's come good. He's uh, probably winded, I would think. And he's back on his feet. Side bottom. Beaten by Moore. Taken by Cowie. He barged his way through. A hand pass from side bottom. Comes up to Cunningham. Given over towards the little fellow. Ball up to Moore. The little fellow was killed. Oh, Morwood plays on, runs himself into all sorts of bother. St Kilda have a tendency to do this too much. Lock it under the ball, can't take the mark. Recovers well, barges his way through. Gives it out to Keel. Keel shoots it, goal! It's a good goal! A piece of work by Tony Lovett. Good goal kick by Peter Keel. Tremendous play. Beautiful football, Tony Lovett. The scoreboard, 12-10. Uh, Melbourne, St Kilda 7-9. The Saints are fighting back. As I said, they were not giving up. But, oh, gee, that was good football by Lockett as he crashed his way through a pack, gave the hand pass to Little Keel, and Peter Keel slammed it through the middle. And I'll tell you what, they are certainly trying their hearts out, the Saints, to get back in this game. They have to pick up 31 points yet on Melbourne. The time clock, 18 and oh, nearly 19 minutes now into the third term at Moravan on Sevens Big League. All the action from this game being brought to you on Sevens cameras. And Healy got the ball working to his brother. Uh, Greg Healy kicks it up toward Templeton. Templeton should give it to Fidge. Fidge into the open goal. And a charge. He's caught. The umpire calls play on. Batterston on the ground. He's caught too. That's a throw over to Flower. And the umpire found the throw. Why didn't John Fidge kick the ball instead of trying to handle? Unbelievable, though, Jack. But this is a handball business. He was running into an open goal and he tried to give a handball instead of having a shot from 20 metres out on his own. There's the kick by Fabia towards the half-back line. That's a mark over the top to Peter Moore. A lovely mark over the top of Allen Sidebottom. 
Peter Moore has been kicking the ball fairly well. He could land this one right up in the goal square if he lets fly with a torpedo punt. I don't think Templeton will bother to lead. Moore, torpedo punt, it was supposed to be off the side of the boot, though, and it's over the boundary line. <laughs> and the secure crowd roar because it's uh, nothing better than to see a champion player as far as they're concerned, from uh, another side, kick the ball out of bounds on the full. Now, this is Paul Morwood on the screen. Melbourne 82, St Kilda 51 points on Sevens Big League, 20 minutes into the well, third term. It's been a good quarter of football. St Kilda have gone from 4 6 to 7 9. And oh, here's Melbourne Templeton. Oh, he's offline, puts it out of bounds on the full. But as I was saying, St Kilda have gone from 4 6 to 7 9. And Melbourne have gone from 8 8. 12 10 so it's been a good quarter of football all round barely yeah. even quarter that was a bad piece of work by the St Kilda defenders there nearly giving Templeton well they gave him the opportunity to goal but he couldn't capitalize upon it his shot going out on the full the free kick will be taken by Danny Frawley whenever they find the football but going back into the game uh, St Kilda have been forced to make or were forced to make some very unusual changes in team placement this afternoon had Cunningham playing at one stage at centre half back, another stage centre half forward, and I just starting in the back pocket. Now I'm not too sure where he's playing now, but Jules, because of his lack of players, Peters had to try and shuffle his team about, and it has not been to their advantage. But this fellow's tried hard, Danny Frawley, but into the back of Kelvin Templeton on about three occasions and given away three goals. There's a kick up towards the half back. Line. Peter Moore goes, and gee, covers some territory. Peter Moore. In they go after it. Good, strong play. Comes out to Rodgers. Rodgers to Cunningham, who's played well in this quarter. Off the side of the boot, not a good kick. Rodney Wright drops the mark. Still in play, said the umpire. Cleverly tapped on to Forster. Forster goes to Barker. Barker to Jeff Cunningham. Jeff Cunningham, oh, bumped over. No free kick, said the umpire. The umpire, Glenn James, and I think he was right, too. Said that that knock was in the side, and that's exactly side what it was. Only a side bump, purely right. and simply. Yep, Change has right. been made. Fitch is off the ground for Melbourne, and they be a disciplinary thing. About and that, I think he should have kicked that goal, Jack. And coming on is Peter Tossel. So the bounce, Moore can't get to it. Burns got the ball off the boot, or to the boot very quickly, and a good mark taken by Stephen Smith. Terrific duel there. Terrific duel. A good fullback, Stephen Smith, against a promising young full forward. I think uh, Smith anticipating the hurry kick from the pack, or so the locker. Good kick by Smith. At the back is little Fashini. Should do the roving. The ball's on the turf. Now Fashini gets in for it. Oh, left it behind. Backing up there was Barker, who got rolled over the boundary line, a boundary throw in. Barker looking for the free kick, but umpire James just said boundary throw in. Half forward flank. In front of the St Kilda grandstand. Oh, nice hit out. A beautiful hit out by side bottom. No free kicks at the other. Hick is caught with the football. That's holding the ball. And that's a good decision by up by Glenn James. And a good tackle there by Mark Forster. Now he's swinging onto the left foot. Lockett's made the move, but it's going to be a 15 metre penalty. So Forster will be brought in within 30 metres of goal. Very slight angle. And boy, this will make it interesting. Check if he can kick this. Yes, well, they've been playing now 23 minutes in the third quarter. Young Forster could uh, get St Kilda up to within about 24 points. Oh, that's a good shot. That's a goal kicked by Mark Poister. Melbourne, 12 10 82. Secure the score being changed now to the show. They are now at eight goals, 9 57 on Sevens Big League. And I think that uh, one of the main reasons Secure are back in it is the form of Cunningham in this quarter because he's playing in his right position and that is right in the action. On the ball, he's played picking up Gerard Healy. And it's putting him into the play a bit. And, uh, the young Saints, are, as I said, they haven't given up for one moment of today's game. They still trail by 25 points. More, but a big knock from the centre bounce. Fabia after for St Kilda. He keeps it out in front of him, which is good thinking. He's still playing the ball in front toward the banner. Oh, picked up beautifully. Got, it, got himself balanced and drives back toward Burns, but it went straight to Zantuck instead. Zantuck on the centre wing position, playing on. The left foot kick raking into the half forward zone. Players set themselves, the ball comes to turn. With a chance now for Greg Healy. He shoots toward goal, but he's off target, I think. No, he got it. Oh, gee, the umpire ran a long way across to his left. But the ball just sneaking in for a goal, so the archery goal coming very quickly off the boot of Greg Healy. Melbourne, 13-10-88. St Kilda, eight goals, nine, 57 on sevens, big league. 
Well, I, I've just about given up watching goal umpires, Jack. I, the best indication of the lot is head for the crowd. Now, if it's a Melbourne crowd, and the Melbourne crowd roared on that occasion, they that's did. what made me think it was a goal. But just go by the crowd reaction. That's usually the, the goal. But the goal umpire, certainly the way he ran across, I, across at first, I thought he'd missed too. As we see side bottom, gets it down to Jeff Cunningham. Well done, Jeff Cunningham. Ducks the head. Caught with the ball, holding the ball. And a correct decision because he was tackled correctly. And that was holding the ball. Gerard Healy about to play on, but the umpire's making... Uh, it's actually a free kick to Peter Moore. Right in the centre of the ground. Whoa, well, look at that. That one worked all right. A good torpedo pun kick. Tapped down to Keel in front of the pack. Chance for Healy. Picks up now. Swings it back on the left foot. He shoots the right goal. He's got another one, I think. Yes, he has. So in the space of two minutes, Greg Healy kicks two goals. And Melbourne take another firm grip on this game here for Rabbit. Just when you think that uh, St Kilda are getting back into the game, two quick goals by Greg Healy, two very good goals. And uh, he's a player with a tremendous future, the brother of Gerard Healy, and uh, the great goal sneak, isn't he, uh, Jack? They both played very well today, too. Greg Healy played. started off in the first half, had a, a great first half. He's done a great deal here in the third term, but uh, he's certainly done his share, and Greg Healy is a player of the future. Certainly looks to be a good player. Chief Jeff Cunningham has been spoken to by up by James and he's doing the right thing. He's playing Gerard Healy as close as possible and he's only doing the, the thing that his coach would want him to do. Here's Burns charging his way through the centre. Still going after the football but taken away by Baniston. Baniston to William. Oh no, it's not. It's Kelly O'Donnell on the left foot. Hooking it back towards half forward. Oh, Greg Healy ran underneath the football. In goes Cowie against Corda. Peter Tossel picks up. Cowie goes in, picks it up, gives in a hand pass to Gary Hodges. Hodges runs into trouble, but gets in the hand pass out wide to John Fabia. He's got it on half-back flank. Some good shepherding by Faschini. The short pass comes up, but Giles is there. Alan Sidebottom, caught for the football, and that is held to him. Sent up by Mitchell, and the bounce will take place right next to the boundary line on centre wing. Boundary throw in, centre wing position, as Peter McKenna told you. Melbourne, 94 points. St Kilda 57 points with nearly two minutes into time on of the third term. Side bottom trying to gain possession, breaks away now. His hand pass, not a good one. Foister gets it moving forward. It's going to bounce badly for Santa. A chance for Wright. Wright picking up now, looking for somewhere to head. He's going to go straight across the goal. The lead is by Kelly O'Donnell. Silvio Fasini up high to take a mark over the top of O'Donnell. Machini to the borders of the St Kilda fans, looking downfield, looking short towards Morwood. And Morwood takes the mark 40 metres out from goal. Well placed kick, nice pass by Fashini and an equally fine mark by Morwood. Just giving Morwood the chance to kick his first goal. St Kilda 8-9, Melbourne 14 goals, 10 on sevens big league as Morwood's about to take a shot at goal from 40 metres out. For Morwood, the drop punt stabs at this one. It's swinging and offline for a point. Didn't so that's come not, off the boot too well. Not a good kick. It was a one of those wobbly, low traje trajectory drop punts. Scoreboard 14 10. Mel, gee, they're certainly slower on this when the Secula missed the goal, don't they? As Peter Moore <laughs> takes the mark, gets it out to Zantuck. I was going to say, well, it's still not up. Yes, it is now. 8 10 to 14 10. So six goals the difference is. Cordner comes up hobbling after taking a good mark at centre half forward. He wants to give her the hand pass. It goes over there to Johnson. Johnson back. And the umpire said he played on. Now that's a very poor decision. He played on actually. Yeah, with a hand pass. But I so think you're entitled to run over the mark, Jack. Yeah, well, I think he may have run over the mark before playing on because that was unusual, that one. I think he's a bit fortunate to Cordner, but he's going to have a shot toward goal. It'll get there for only one behind. An unusual decision, that one. Well, I'll say, the St Kilda fans are hooting. I, I would say the corner was limping and wanted to give in the hand pass, and the umpire, well, he elected to say that the player went over the mark. There's a nice mark taken for Melbourne. Looks like Gerard Healy, and that's a, there's a real war going. He didn't come back. He was whistled up twice. He didn't come back. So Cunningham giving away a 15-metre penalty. I did say earlier in the game that Jeff Cunningham isn't playing a very disciplined game of football. I think he's a, he always gives everything, Jeff Cunningham, and I think he's just a bit over-enthusiastic. There's no good giving away 15 metres, though. 
There's the kick by Healy. It's off target, way off target. The umpires confer and only one behind. As you can see, I'm a rep for Jim. <laughs> <laughs> one I, reckon he, I reckon he gives his guts every weakness and killed her in a losing side. Never stops trying. And, uh, well, he's a state player, and uh, that's that's the reason he got his Guernsey, because of his efforts. There's the ball on that halfback, that rubby flower. Not 100% fit, I wouldn't think. Going in after it is Johnson. Alan Johnson picks it up, kicks it high. Templeton and Frawley. Frawley from behind. Templeton in front. Punched away by Frawley. And he's done a pretty good job, too. Kelvin Templeton today has kicked three goals, and Frawley has frustrated him, given away a couple of stupid free kicks, which has made a big difference to Templeton's goal tally. Here's the ball with uh, Baniston held to him, said the umpire. Good decision by umpire James. The ball will be bounced about 20 metres out from the Melbourne goal. Exactly 30 minutes into the third term, and Melbourne in attack. A few metres out, there's Healy putting it on its way. That's Greg Healy's kicked his third goal this term, and uh, it's been a very, very fruitful term for Greg Healy, because three goals in this quarter, and Melbourne now 15-12, 102, St Kilda 8 10 58 on sevens big league well Gerard Healy when he first came to Melbourne I can re recall him across that half forward line a real little goal sneak and now his brother's come and has got that same uncanny knack to be able to get in there and kick those goals that are needed and that was a very good goal as have all his goals been today there's Corden having the ball punched away from him Cowie into the back of his opponent there no doubt about that one. That's little Healy again, Greg Healy. He kicks it down there. He's looking for Templeton. Frawley, oh, geez, doing a good job. Punches the ball away. Over to Paul Morwood. He blind turns. Get in the, gets in the hand pass to Tomei. Tomei has a running player running fast, and this time it's Jeff Moore, the interchange player. He nearly mucked it up, but now he's got it onto the left foot. Hooks it up towards uh, half forward. Uh, that was a very good mark there taken by Shane Zantuck. Zantuck with the ball on the half back flank for Melbourne out of sight of the ground. Should get right down to the half forward zone with a good kick, and then he does. It's up very high. Big cow, he came in from the back to spoil. Put it down the ground for Keel. Greg Healy suffers it to, out of the hands of Keel toward the boundary line. We'll see a throw in taking place on the position nearly half forward for Melbourne on the outer side. Halfway between wing and half forward. They get it out again. Johnson bringing the ball away from Melbourne. Went for a bounce and he left the ball behind. Shoots toward goal. It's pretty close. It's a good shot, but just off target. Only one behind. Wasn't a bad piece of work by Johnson then. Good piece of work as he broke away and uh, long strider Alan Johnson. A lovely kick as far as distance went, but just off line. Now this time they have a raffle. Every week we see about five or six different players kicking off for different clubs. This is a uh, oh, good mark. Now is that Greg Healy again? It is. Greg Healy, a lovely mark. He's playing a very, very good quarter. As, uh, the player who kicked that one in, one in, by the way, was Odges as Healy kicks it up. Looking for Templeton. He's got the city flies. Taking it beautifully off the pack as Peter Tossel. Keeps it low. Fires at the goals. And that's another one coming up to the Demons. And that's Peter Tossel's first. Melbourne moved their score to 16 goals, 13, 109. St Kilda, 8 goals, 10, 58 on Sevens Big League. Well, Melbourne, Peter, that's a lot of shots. 29 shots to 18. Yes, and uh, they've been much the better side, but uh, they've, they've got far too many good class players, and they back up well, they play as a team, a very quick little side, but Paul Masters and Kilda, I think they have not given up at any stage, and they haven't put in that poor quarter that they normally put in. As we see, Hodges is covering a ton of ground out wide, looking for Lane. Against him is Yates. Yates picks it up, punches the ball on in front of him, and what is the umpire going to say? That's a ridiculous decision. Well, he said holding the he ball. He punched the ball away. Barker got a hand pass up now. It's a Kilda trying to come forward. The siren sounds. They can't get a score. And at three-quarter time, Melbourne, 16 goals, 13, 109. St Kilda, 8 goals, 10, 58. And more is it going into, into attack now, up towards Sidebottom, who takes the mark in the forward pocket. Well, Sidebottom, uh, you said that Moore's been playing well, and he has been playing well, you're quite right. But, gee, he hasn't been disgraced today, has he? Sidebottom. Uh, Sidebottom. No, he's done quite well. I think Moore's done a little bit more around the around ground. The ground but uh, they had a great duel. It'll be a good goal if he can kick this one. He has kicked one goal out of St Kilda's eight. See if he can kick this one off from off the boundary line. Alan Sidebottom. Off the boot, it looks pretty good. Yes, it's a goal. Good goal, kicked by side bottom, bringing St Kilda back. He certainly got the applause of St Kilda fans for that one. Melbourne, 16-13, 109. 
St Kilda, nine goals, 11, 65 on seven's big league. Lovely goal by Alan Sidebottom, right from the boundary line, as you can see, and, uh, well, the perfect drop punt. The goal umpire didn't move at all, and that might lift them a little bit. 9-11 to a 16-13, as Jack said, but, gee, it'll take a miracle to win it. That's a free kick going St Kilda's way because David Corner stepped into the centre square area. Alan Sidebottom will go the big booming torpedo, oh. doesn't get onto it. Peter Moore ducks back, drops a sitter. In they go after it again. Oyster dives on top of the ball. Up by Glenn James comes in and in his nice, usual calm manner, will come in and bounce the ball. Uh, around about centre half forward for St Kilda. The bounce being put down now. Davis Giles. More going off. So he might be limping, but St Kilda in attack now. Burns is there. Tries to thread his way through, a left foot snap, no, got smothered. Diving in his bark, I can't get it out. And umpire James will uh, bounce the ball right on the end of this square. So more off the ground and coming on for Melbourne is Thorne. The bounce taking place now about 15 metres out from St Kilda's goal. Big punch out, Burns, left foot shot, off target, only one behind. And as I've said right throughout the game, St Kilda not giving up without a fight. They are really battling hard. 9-12 they've moved on to. Melbourne on 16-13. Peter Moore has limped off the ground. Let's hope it's not too serious. But I doubt whether he will reappear for the game as we see Stephen Smith kicking it to the half-back line area. Up they go. The ball is punched away. Here's a chance for Gary Hodges if he gets the bounce. Doesn't get a favourable bounce. Goes in after Greg when he didn't have the football. It'll be a free kick to Hodges. About 25 metres out for goal. 45 degree angle. He's gone short and finds to May in a much better position than himself but a bit further out from goal. Yes, I was about to say he's lengthened the kick for goal, Peter, but Tomei is more direct to the goal. So a chance now for Tomei to kick his third goal. Has kicked two, so he knows where they are. Puts it up and puts it through. So St Kilda kick another goal. Ten goals, 12. 72 now. Melbourne 16, 13. 109 on seven's big league. Been playing seven minutes into this final quarter and the Saints are starting to fight back. And... Uh, well, as I've said before, they have really put in today, these young Saints side. Melbourne have been far too good as far as uh, ability and height. But the Saints have battled very, very hard. Melbourne lead by six goals, one over St Kilda. So it's going to be a, a long, hard road if you think St Kilda can get up. To May, drive St Kilda forward, lock it out in front. Lock it takes the mark. So lock it, only 35 metres out from goal. The Saints fans love it. Gee, that was a clever mark the way he arched his he back arched and his kept back. the hands out in front so Stephen Smith is a very good spoiling pullback he could not get his fist to that ball that was a tremendous effort by the young full forward let's hope he can kick it for his third let's see what he can do with it he snaps the ball the goal up by goes across it's close and it's a goal Melbourne, 16-13. Well, St Kilda are coming home with a bit of a wet sail. They've moved on from their three-quarter time score of eight goals, ten. They have now kicked three goals, two for the quarter. Melbourne have only added one solitary behind to their total. The fans you can hear, and the St Kilda fans, when they get invoiced, they are in full voice. Gordner in the ruck, Jack. Gordner in the ruck, taking the place of the injured Peter Moore. Ball being put down by Glenn James at Favour's side bottom. Could take it, but he goes the big thump to Burns. Burns looking for the free kick. Should have got it too, because he was being held. Burns goes in again, and the umpire now will bounce. It was, it was well played by Burns. It, it was cleverly done because he deliberately did not take the ball, put his body in, uh, shielding the ball away from the Melbourne player, and could, should have got the free kick, but it's on centre wing. Burns is in there behind the pack waiting for the crumbs as we see Cordner against side bottom. Side bottom, a beautiful hit out. Oh, gee, Cunningham could have got one. Grabbing it is uh, Gerard Healy out to Zantuck. And Melbourne under a bit of pressure at the moment. Up to Robbie Flower, who's had a very quiet day. I doubt whether he's 100% fit. Grabbing the ball is Thorne, who's also been fairly quiet. Up to Fidge. Oh, probably done. Too strong, John Fidge, as he marks about 35 to 40 metres out from goal, 45 degree angle. Well, John Fidge has a chance now to kick his second goal. And I said only moments ago that Melbourne have not scored a goal in this final term replay on Sevens Big League. But will he kick their first for the term? Look at that one go. 
That's a goal. Good goal. Kicked by John Pidge using the torpedo punt. And Melbourne needed that one for a steadier. Melbourne now 17 goals, 13 St Kilda, 11 goals, 12 on seven's big league. Well, I feel that this game has been, uh, well, the actual play has been a lot closer than what the scores indicate. At the moment, six goals in front of Melbourne, but I think St Kilda put up a much better performance than that. And uh, that's the, you said that was a steadier. They really did need that because St Kilda had a bit of a run on as we see side bottom against Cordner. The oh, side bottom rucking well over the Burns. Take it away by Zantuck. Up towards half forward it goes. The ball favours the Moore. He gets it over to Hodges, who's been a good player today. Out wide there to Paul Morwood. Morwood all kick it as he kicks it towards half forward now. He left it a little bit late. Zantuck is there. The ball is shoveled out of the way. In goes Shane Zantuck. Picks it up onto the left foot. Hooks it back towards half forward. The ball is thumped away. Here come the Saints again, though, as the kick from Foister. Down to Lockett. Oh, good effort by young Lockett. Stephen Smith goes in after it. Little lanes there for... For St Kilda with the umpire. Oh, a bit ticky touch, with, but still the umpire has paid the free kick down there to Smith, who kicks it across the ground to half back flank. The chance for Johnson picking up now with no one to kick to. He just heads the ball up round the wing, trying to get to it as Flower, but can't quite get the bounce of it. In the back against Flower, he couldn't do much about it. The free kick will be taken by Lane. Greg Lane of St Kilda putting the ball up toward Lockett, but the kick doesn't travel far enough for Lockett. And Stephen Hick claims the mark for Melbourne. Hick can see a short one out there. The hand pass finds Yates. Yates now with Lane closing the gap. Gets the ball moving up to the wing position. Cordner into the back of the opposition. Thumped on by Cronin. A chance for Healy. Greg Healy, well caught. Loses possession. Morwood takes it. Lockett leads into the pocket. The kick won't quite make it. And Lockett got into the back of the opposition in sheer frustration. Has given away a free kick. Tremendous tackle by Jeff Cunningham back in the centre on Gerard Healy when he was going to get away and that was uh, unfortunate that Lockett was caught behind there, gave a free kick to Rodney Wright who kicks it wide, he's looking for Giles Giles flies, takes the mark two on half back flank, he's looking to play on now who's he got further afield Tossel's there, Williams is there, up goes Tossel and takes a very good mark in front of the pack, he immediately plays on gets it out wide, here's a chance for Melbourne again on the left foot, it comes up towards full foot, once again and I'm very very impressed with Danny Frawley's performance at full back today on Calvin Templeton playing short, he finds Hodges at half back he was looking for the chance to play on but didn't have anyone to give the ball to now he goes wide and gets it out very wide to Cowie, his, oh. pen, his foot pass was dreadful Peter Tossel picks up quickly, shoots it out toward Giles. Giles in bother, got tackled too high, and he will take... Oh, the umpire said the other way, holding the ball. Well, oh, I thought it was a high tackle. Oh, so did I. Very lucky to get that free kick. Cowie plays on to a more. He's going to bring it back into half forward now. The kick comes in towards Burns. He's up high, doesn't try and take the mark. He thumps it down toward Lane, but thumped on by Ick. Going after it is Thorne. Coming in once again is Barker. Barker got tripped up and the umpire said in the back to Healy. Could not see that at all. Rick Gerard Healy, but we won't comment on the umpire decisions. I think we'll be commenting too often. As we see Gerard Healy from half back, a very ticky touch with one up towards the centre wing. Vic drops it. Keel there, out to Jeff Cunningham. He's battling hard as usual. Over to Cronin. Cronin towards half forward. Jared Healy's ducked back towards the half back line. Swings onto the left foot, kicks it across the ground. He's looking out there for Rodney Wright. Oh, good play by young Grant. David Grant, beautifully done. Hooks it back down there, looking for Lockett. He dives, couldn't take the mark. Goes in after it against Gerard Healy, who dived on top of the ball. Now it's Stephen Smith. Shovels the ball out there to Zantuck. Now coming away with the ball is Rodney Wright, who kicks it wide and finds David Williams. David Williams has been a very good player today for Melbourne. Very constructive in what he does. Gets the ball up high. Over the back will come little Fashini, but he got into the pack when he should have been roving, and the mark has been taken by side bottom. Playing on to Hodges. St Kilda moving the ball around the outer wing, looking for Cunningham, and he takes the mark out there on the wing position. St Kilda need to get the ball moving quickly. Although I don't think they can win the game, they're still trying to get a score on the board. Oh, I just can't take the, the mark, but he tried very hard. Going in is Tossel. Peter Tossel claimed with the ball. 
but umpire Mitchell said a bounce will take place on the half forward flank for St Kilda. He's got some curry dodges. He has, he's got plenty of that, Peter. Melbourne leading 115 to 78 on Sevens Big League. Trevor Barker does the ruck work. It's taken away by Rodney Wright. Side bottom ducks back. Oh, gee, that's a marker or a free kick, is it? Uh, the umpire playing the mark, in fact, Glenn James and Yes, to Alan Sidebottom. And as I said earlier, he's appreciating, I think, the fact that Peter Moore's got off. That's for sure he's dominating at the moment. Yes, he's playing well. But both he and Moore had a great deal today. Sidebottom getting the ball up high, going out around the flank, and the man in front takes the mark. This young fellow we saw before, David Grant, now kicking in toward Lockett. He gets the ball up high. Lockett trapped behind Smith. But got the front berth. No mark. Didn't hold it. The ball comes to turf and Zantuck on the wrong foot. But now gets on the left foot and drives up toward Flower, who's led right down the ground from the half-forward zone. Flower out of bounds. The ball's still in. Thorne tried to get it, but now the umpire said a free kick against St Kilda to be played to Robbie Flower. Listen to the hoops of this St Kilda crowd, but do you see there's a champion player on the screen, I don't think anyone would dispute that, he's certainly, I don't think, 100% fit, but full marks to Cronin, who's played him very close today, as we see Odgers bundled out of the way, in they go after it, and the umpire said that Odgers ran straight into uh, Peter Thorne there, umpire Glenn James, and Thorne is taking the free kick, and rightly so. He'll be looking for Fidge or the full forward in Templeton. Fidge and Templeton both fly. Fitch should not have been up there. The ball down now, and Fabia's hand pass favours Belvin, I think, at this stage. Cunningham comes out with it. Now Fitch gives uh, chase. Hand pass by DeMay. Finds Hodges. Hodges going a short pass. Finds Morwood. Morwood will be looking for the hand pass to play on. He comes back to Tomei. Tomei can't get a long enough kick in to find Lockett. He kicks it up toward the half-forward zone. The kick drops short, taken by Yates. Messed up by Smith, picked up by Yates. He goes out wide, a chance now. And Kelly O'Donnell gets it back to Stephen Eck. He walks around very cleverly, very coolly. Gets the ball onto the boot and drives out toward the wing position. It's been taken out there by the man I spoke of before, Williams. Williams now, very cool. Long hand pass, straight to Johnston. Johnson, the further hand pass, looking for Kelly O'Donnell. Oh, Cowie had tackled hard, grabbed by O'Donnell. Onto the left foot, he goes up towards John Fidge. Good play, Fabia over the back. Fidge goes in after it again. Tomei picks up, hooks it back on the right foot towards centre wing. A lovely mark is taken by Giles. Giles on the wing position, out of side. Falling for a lead. The kick's long, up toward Cordner it travels. He's coming out, got nudged in the back by Frawley. The umpire played that one. It's four times now. Yes, that's unfortunately for Frawley. As I said, he's uh, well. The free kicks were definitely there. Yes, pushes pushes in the back. No doubt about that. Good umpiring by both umpires as far as those decisions go. But it's just a bit of inexperience in general play. He's played particularly well, but unfortunately, he's given away those silly free kicks. He about might lack just that out. little bit of pace, Peter, to put himself in front yeah, instead of being be at right. one pace behind. Corden has already kicked four goals today. Let's see what he can do with this one. Make His it kicking five. has improved dramatically as he splits the centre with that one. Five goals to David Corden, a very good effort. Melbourne move on to 121 points and Kilda stay on 78 points and you're on seven's big league. 18 minutes gone in this final quarter and uh, Melbourne with the game well in hand. Peter Moore off the ground. So the Templeton's in, in the ruck. Now there's an interesting one, and Corden has gone to full forward. Well, Templeton's been pretty well held by uh, uh, Frawley, so that's probably a good move to run him around a little bit. As we see it in the centre of the ground, Stephen Ick goes in after it. No one can get away with it. Now the Saints have got a chance through Paul Moore as Keel had done the hard work. Grabbed by Morwood. Swings away onto the left foot. He kicks it out wide. Burns had made the lead. He ducks back. The bounce. He gets it too. Too slow in getting rid of it, but finally does get the kick in. Lock it in front against Stephen Smith. Lovely mark over the back by Stephen Smith. And that's been a terrific duel. Tony Lockett has kicked three, but, uh, well, has missed a few. I think four points he's kicked. Yes, three goals, four. And Smith's played Lockett. pretty well, too. Smith coming around the boundary line, keeping things safe. Flower! Robbie Flower on the half-back flank. Playing short. Up toward the wing position that travels. The ball on the turf. Tossel couldn't take the mark. Williams again getting the ball and using it well. Up toward the half forward zone, but little Gary Hodges in the way for St Kilda. Played well. St Kilda through Hodges going in toward the centre of the ground. Well placed kick taken by Keel. Could have been 15, but Keel plays on. 
and it's Odgers once again making ground and taking the hand pass to drive up toward the half forward zone little touch of the fumbles there but Melbourne may get out of trouble here the ball about to be delivered over to Zantuck Zantuck on the right foot kicks up toward Flower Flower neither Flower nor Krona can get to it and we'll see the ball out of bounds center wing area as we see side bottom there he is on the screen now about to duck back uncontested you probably grab this one. Oh, he took his eyes off the ball over to Cowie though as he had plenty of time to get rid of it the short pass comes into Paul Moorwood he swings onto the left foot now back onto the right he's got a loose man oh he's under pressure though for Sheeny goes in after it again picks it up on the left foot hooks it high he's looking down for Lockett but Lockett's too far back no one in there to help Lockett of course and uh, number 45 taking the mark for Melbourne is Yates Yates looking up the outer wing or the members wing position Templeton's there, Flower's going to do the roving and does it, does it well, he got caught in, nearly got caught in possession, but good work there by Cowie, can't pick up, side bottom goes in, it's come out to Williams again, he's caught in possession, now the umpire said he caught play on, and now he'll sound the whistle for a bounce. Umpire James, in my opinion there, he umpired that well, I think that was the correct thing to let it go. There's a free kick though, no, no not it. the umpires, we see side bottom, up towards the half forward line, ducking back is Giles, played well today Peter Giles, hooking it back towards centre wing, bounces the ball favours Cowie, the big thump away, comes down towards Barker, Barker ducks the head, tries to get the free kick, out wide it goes to Keel, he's tried hard also today, to May. A hand pass over the top to Moorwood. Moorwood, a long hand pass across there to Amor. Amor, two players to beat, gets in the hand pass. And the umpire said it was holding the ball. Yes, a 15 metre penalty also as the ball was kicked further downfield by Tomei. So uh, Melbourne getting the advantage of the 15 metres, and Zantuck will take the kick. Melbourne, 18 13, 121. St Kilda, 11 goals, 12 78. And Zantuck drives up to the half forward zone, dropping back to Cowie, and he takes the mark to St Kilda at centre half back. Looking for the chance to play on, he finds Cronin now with a hand pass going out towards Fashini. He can't take the mark. It's with Kelly O'Donnell and Fashini doing battle out there on the outer wing. Picked up by Fashini, given over to Cunningham. Now it's a hand pass further downfield. Here's a chance now for the Saints as they come down. This is David Grant on the right foot, hooks it wide. Oh, there's a good mark taken. Is this Hodges again? It is. Oh, that's a lovely mark by Gary Hodges, and uh, he's had a magnificent last quarter in this game. In fact, he's been a good player all day as he marks at centre-half forward. He's a steady little player, a very courageous player too, as Peter McKenna told you before. Gone short, the lead by Lockett, the mark taken by that player. So Tony Lockett, who has kicked three goals for out of St Kilda's total of 11 goals, 12, now has the chance, of course, to make it four goals for himself and 12 for his club. Melbourne, 18-13. St Kilda 11-12 before the kick of Tony Lockett only about 35 to 40 metres out should kick it the umpire has a good look and hit the post hit the post the umpire indicating just that so Lockett you'd have to say off target now Peter three goals well, five the difference for a full court as far as a good day and a bad day if he kicks five goals three or six goals two he's had a good day but three five is not a good day as he kicks towards the half back line oh there's a big fly by Giles taken away by Rodney Wright off the side of the boot Thorne gets underneath the football can't take the mark the ball comes loose to Thorne again going in is Giles again Hodges or oh, look at him at the bottom of the pack again and in comes Glenn James to bounce the ball half forward flank uh, in St Kilda's forward zone. 23 minute mark behind us in the final term at Moravan, the game between St Kilda and Melbourne. Melbourne leading 121 to 79 on Sevens Big League and the ruck work being done out there by Templeton. Hurried out of the pack up toward the centre of the ground. Melbourne about to go forward again if they can get out this one through Flower. Flower going back but can't get it yet. Fabia's there for St Kilda. Got a hand pass out but that's been intercepted and kicked by Bailey up to the half forward zone taken by Cowie. Out very wide to Amore. Amore can't get all oh, good assistance from his teammate there. Gains in possession. He comes into the short into Barker. Oh, little Hodges. And he got a knock in the head oh. and he will take the free kick. He's had a terrific quarter, as I said. And he's uh, copped one high there uh, across the head as he went to take that mark. And he, well, I think he would have got the mark all the free kick there. As Hodges is going for the torpedo punt, I think. Yes, he gets onto it too. It's a booming kick. It's a beautiful kick by Gary Hodges. And he's put it through for a lovely goal. 
Well, if anyone deserved a goal today, it was a fellow who just kicked it there, Gary Hodges. Played a great game for St Kilda and certainly deserved that one. Melbourne 18 13, 121. St Kilda 12 goals, 13 85 on Sevens Big League. Well, I'll tell you what I'm finding hard to do is pick up where he's playing, Jack. You try and tell me where he's playing. He's now gone to the half back line or even the full back line, and yet most of his kicks have been coming up around about the half forward line. Well, he was named in the back pocket. That's all I'm going to try and tell you, Peter. Oh, geez, he's <laughs> covering a bit of territory. Well, he must be following someone down. Tony Jewell. Cowie gets it moving, and there's a chance here for Foister, is it? Got a chance to play on. Kicking long up toward Lockett. Lockett jockeys for position with Smith got one hand to it. Comes down, picked up and snapped by Grant. And the ball is through, I think. Good goal kicked by the young player in David Grant. And St Kilda, as Peter McKenna did tell you, have not given up. Melbourne 18 13, 121. St Kilda 13 13, 91 on Sevens Big League. Well, I must say, uh, Melbourne have been too good throughout the day and they've never really looked like losing the game. But St Kilda will win a lot of matches this year. Well, I won't say a lot, they will win some matches. They'll put when they get their full side back. Max Crow is out. Robbie Alfonston, two of their best players, of course, out. But they're really fighting hard. Here's Melbourne through Greg Healy on the left foot up towards the forward line. This Hodges again. Oh, beautifully done. But he misses the run of the ball there. Over to Robbie Flower. Flower further afield to Williams. Back to Flower. Flower sprints to the boundary line. Runs into a brick wall. And that's holding the ball as the crowd roar. Hanson killed and play on now. Bring the ball back. The umpire said that's not permitted, so the ball has to go back from whence it came. Good play by Cronin. A bit of pace by Bobby. A bit of pace by Flower then. He was oh, going like a steam what. train around that boundary line, but the gap closed up very no, quickly. No way known he's fit though. I Hello, know. he's done one of those Allen kicks. He got across ground and he's found a more. A more looking for the hand pass, the opportunity to hand pass to Oh, Fabio. he's got a kick into the man. Oh boy, 15 metres. Just as well, because I think someone oh. would have shot him had he not got that ball up well, he's a bit slow in getting it to Fabio well, anyhow yeah, should have given the hand pass over Jack Amore not a bad looking kick down towards Morwood who's at the back now got jockeyed out of position there by Bailey Bailey getting the front berth just oh. about a throw for mine and the umpire has now said he was being held but not in position so he, uh, possession so he'll take the free kick Brett Bailey number 24 for Melbourne is giving it back to Wright and now it goes back to Greg Healy so Healy is the recipient of this one as he goes up towards Fidge. Fidge flies. No mark. Grabbed by Peter Tossel. Out wide to Kelly O'Donnell under the left foot. Now he's looking for Thorne. Thorne against Hodges. And Hodges was grabbed, I think, yes. when he went for that mark. Let's see if he gets the free kick. He is. Yeah, the umpire, umpire indicated umpire. that, Peter. But umpiring umpire Mitchell as Hodges kicks it to centre half back. Dangerous play, but it comes off as Peter Keel marks on his chest. Peter Keel looking for the chance to get going, but he can't see any leads downfield. He has to kick now towards. Burns and uh, he can't take it. Cunningham couldn't take it either. It's on the turf. Johnson pushed to ground, but long hand pass comes out and it's taken by uh, Healy. This is Gerard Healy going gold after the hand pass by Thorne and he's put it through for a goal to Melbourne. So if you wanted any uh, any questions on the result, uh, Gerard Healy kicks his third goal and Melbourne moved to 19 13, 127, St Kilda 13 13, 91. Have been playing almost 28 minutes into this final quarter and as Jack said the game well and truly over a nice goal there by Jared Healy he's been a little bit quieter since half time since Jeff Cunningham was obviously sent out to tag him and play him close after a very good first half of football there's Templeton doing the ruck work beat and there's Jeff Cunningham takes it away beautifully gets in the kick down towards Lockett who sprints away from Smith Smith knocks it cleverly towards the boundary line that is very good defensive play and a true fullback play. I see Lockett often, Peter, going for him, trying to take a mark one handed. I don't know why he does that. Maybe just can't get his body behind the ball, but he takes his marks or tries to take his marks one handed. And as I was playing a little bit of uh, noise in our microphones here, but the ball being thrown in from the forward pocket position for St Kilda and from the hands of the player straight out of bounds. That noise has improved since you moved that old faithful clock, Jack. Is that what happened, Peter? <laughs> well, that faithful clock showing we've been playing nearly 29 minutes of the final term here at Moravan, the game between St Kilda and Melbourne. Lockett shovels the ball out. He's looking for Burns. Burns playing for the free kick. Rightly so, as the umpire, good umpiring to let it go as we see Barker. 
to Fabia. Fabia onto the left foot, looking down towards the forward line. Out they come, the Melbourne defence. This is Yates. Oh, the beautiful football to Williams. Williams tries to give it back to Johnson. In goes uh, Daryl Cunningham. Taken away by Melbourne, though, by Yates. Good play by the young back pocket player. Up towards half forward. Hunched away beautifully by Hodges again. Half forward flank. Tossel hooks it back, looking for Cordner. Out he comes. Waits for his teammate. Now it's Cowie. Gets it across to Hodges. Hodges bundled over as he kicks the ball towards the half back line. It'll be a free kick down the field. And let's see who's hurt there. It's not Cordner, it could be Fidge. He's hurt behind the play. It is John Fidge, and he doesn't look too good at all. As you the see trainers... the signal there, the, um, uh, the trainer indicating the thumbs doctor. down. Uh, the doctor going out now to have a look at young Fidge. But he got caught in the middle of the pack there, Jack. Although he'll get some expert attention now anyhow, he's in the right hands. So Fitch, while he's in the hands of the medical staff, the siren sounds, the end of the game here for Avon. And the scoreboard showing Melbourne 19-13-127 have run out winners over St Kildas on 13-13-91.